Zoom out and come to the side to the evening. Sorry, sorry, Vanille. Zoom out, total smart, total smart, and come to the side to the bottom, please.
Vanilla must come to you.
Kan je je wanneer? Are you speaking? Okay, I got you. Are you on me? Oh no, I was just, I was just testing it, sorry. I don't have that for you.
Sunday, what did you say? Yeah. Good afternoon and welcome to Cape Town. It's a, a wonderful afternoon and the CSA T20 is back with us and the focus this afternoon falls on uh, the, the local team and that will be World Sports Betting Western Province taking on the AET Tuskers and uh, can't wait for the match to start. No surprise that the toss went the way of the hosts and they decided to put pads and uh, make the first use of, of the pitch. With me this afternoon, Tariq Abraham and uh, Tariq, we have an opportunity to go through this lineups that's currently on the screen. There's, there's, it's very obvious that you have a, a very loaded Western Province team, a lot of experience, international experience. Hasn't been the best of starts for the Tuskers in this competition, but they'll take some confidence from their last performance, their first win. Can they build on that performance? From a Western Province perspective, they feel it's a bit of a snag, a great start, nice momentum, and then, I'm not going to say the wheels came off slightly, but they beat a couple of hurdles on the way, and that puts them in third position on the log as we see the umpires come out into the middle. But it, it's, it's going to be a good contest, but Western Province batting first with a, a very loaded lineup. Yeah, thanks, John. It's a lovely day out here at uh, WSB Newlands, and, and like you say, it's a Western Province side that is absolutely loaded. And, I guess that they've, they've probably got you know, so much depth in their squad that they can come into this game, you know, make three changes, and of those three changes, two are debutants. They've got the SA and the 19 captain, Juan James making his debut, and Valentine Ketime comes in as well. Um, and, and I'm guessing for them, they will be very, very happy to see uh, Jonathan Bird return. Uh, he was one of those instrumental batters up top that got them the fast starts in those early games, had a bit of an injury, which kind of unsettled them to, to, to say the least um, and that's when they sort of made that little dip in the competition but he's back now so but more firepower for Western Province at the top of the order and similarly for the Tuskers to me this sort of game is sort of the what's happening to them mentally they've just come off a victory yes but this should have been a home game for them they're on the road now for the rest of the competition unfortunately obviously we it's well documented what happened to the, the, the Peter Maritzburg Oval and no fault of the AET Tuskers themselves. But so, you know, where are they mentally? Are they okay with traveling so much throughout the competition? And, well, thus far, there's, a, a, there's one tick. They beat the Lions at the Wanderers. So that's already a tick for them. But coming into this game, they've also made two changes. Trumpelman and uh, Kumalo have uh, vacated the premises, so to say, and uh, no full Budaza comes in for them. And interesting enough, it is uh, the captain that taken the responsibility himself and he's decided he's going to open the voting. Yeah, we go to history and we look back at the 10th of March. The, the wheels really came off for the Tuskers on that occasion against the self-same Western Province. They lost by seven wickets and, and more concerning, they posted 115 for seven. Province chased that down quite easily inside 12 and a half overs for the loss of only three wickets. Now, an opportunity for the host to set the trend and set the target, and, and you mentioned the surprise element immediately. Michael Erlang, Erlang says, we'll go, we'll go to spin, and he has a, a slip in place as well, and it's game on. It's Edward Moore and Tony De Zorzi at the crease. It's a, a pretty uh, imposing opening partnership. Here we go. It's probably also no surprise, Johan, that uh, Erlang has decided to open the bowling himself, right arm off spinner, both you know, Eddie Moore and Tony De Zorzi being left-handers turning the ball immediately away from them. Oh, lovely, lovely length by Erlang. Great start. Oh, does he beat the infield? He can't. It's three dots. This is exactly, you know, the one who would say the start that uh, Erlang would have wanted. Three balls, three dots, and... Also putting a bit of pressure on the batsman, getting through these three balls very quickly. 
you know, in all likelihood, uh, wanting to get through the over a lot faster as well. Unfortunately, the uh, fielder did himself a little bit of an oopsie. Yeah. Early break in play, certainly saved four. There's no, no cover defense for the Tuskers, no boundary runners. We're inside the power play, the first six overs, very important to, to capitalize on that. But an immediate concern for the Tuskers. A long, very experienced campaigner, played a, a lot of ex cricket in, in the free state as well. And now leading this Tuskers outfit. We haven't officially gone through the lineups, but yeah, the likes of Cameron Delport, that, that certainly gives them a lot of experience in this Tuskers lineup. We talk about Erlang leading from the front, uh, all the cricket that he's played around the country. Tian Kukumur has really impressed as well. He's had a good couple of years. I mean, if you touch on experience right there in the middle of your screen, Budaza. He, uh, we know he's at Wiley Little Left Armour. Um, came over from, from the Knights after they unfortunately got relegated uh, to the second division, but he's also been you know, spearhead of this Tuskers attack. And running through the, the Western Province lineup, Moore, De Zorzi, Jonathan Burke, Carl Verena. You've already spoken about Katime, George Linder, John James. What an, what an opportunity for James, Wayne Parnell, Carl Simmons, Buren Hendricks. Very difficult to identify weaknesses <laughs> if you look at, uh, at the paper side of things, but we all know the game is not played on paper, it's out in the middle, and this is a, a good start by Michael Erlang. He'll, he'll want to capitalize and make sure that he can finish with a, a strong over. Just a bit of a break in momentum and a, a change in, in, in personnel. So, Moore, what will you decide? It's uh, three dots. Won't take too kindly to that. He won't want Erlang to settle. And there we go. There's the, the shot in anger, as we anticipated. Can't let Erlang get away with four dots in a row. And finally, the ball does trickle over the boundary, and we have our, our first runs in this encounter. It's off the bat of Moore, and it's four to Western Province. Uh, okay, Eddie Moore was waiting for that ball just to be pitched up a little bit more, a little bit of extra flight. Spotted the one that he wanted, went after it. Didn't quite catch enough of it. But uh, enough to get to the boundary. The follow-up so important. He's got slightly wider. Well, that's good from uh, Erlang identifying that perhaps it was a bit too straight. And uh, kept this one a bit wider, but outside the eye line. It's a strong finish. It opens it up on the offside. It's a, a lovely shot. It beats the inner ring. It's off to the boundary again. Two boundaries to open proceedings. Province eight without loss after the first over. Fantastic start to the over four. Erlang getting the three dot balls and then, like you mentioned, you on a uh, slight little break in play. So just watch Eddie Moore just waiting for this one. Slightly again, perhaps too wide this time from Erlang wanting to you know, bring uh, Eddie Moore out. Just all hand and eye for uh, Eddie Moore, slaps that one straight through the uh, cover point region to the boundary, but Erlang will probably be more frustrated with himself at the way he uh, ended that over. Let's talk about this man, Tony De Zorzi, and uh, this week we saw the announcement of the contracted men and women in South African cricket, and Tony De Zorzi's name is part of that contracted group, and well deserved, and it also shows that there's investment in him as an individual, and promising the future. We've already seen his credentials in the last couple of months. Really great to, to, to see him step up and get that opportunity. But he, he'll sl sleep slightly easier, but it brings some more pressure because now there's a, an expectancy, there's a bit of a target, and it's a big pri it's a price scalp. There's uh, Keith Dudgeon, who's uh, Operating for the Tusker, so spin from the one end, seam from the other. I'm pretty sure that uh, after that contracted list came out, there's a lot of uh, bowlers domestically that uh, would want to you know, add some of their wickets into, into their column. And I mean, uh, who wouldn't want uh, Tony De Zorzi after the remarkable summer that he's just had playing for you know, the Proteas, um, playing in the, the SA20 as well for uh, Durban Super Giants. I mean, he was a late call-up to that as well. 
slaps this off towards the boundary and it's got too much heat on it. It's a, a third boundary for Edmund Moore off to the third man fence. So Moore off to a fast start initially. Michael Erlang just had him there for the first three balls of the, the first over. But now Edward Moore, he's uh, received something wide outside off stump. He's gone for it. Off the toe of the bat, maybe the Tuskers will say slightly lucky, but you'll take that luck. Make your own luck in cricket as well, but it's a, it's a good start for Edward Moore. Oh, it's a lovely shot by Moore. He, he, he's seeing it big. Yeah, it definitely sounded uh, very nice from where we're sitting, so he's definitely seeing it big. And interestingly, what I have picked up from Eddie Moore thus far is that there's not much foot movement uh, early doors. Perhaps just wanting to see if there is a bit of swing on offer and then adjust. But if you give him a bit of width, he is going to punish you. Clear skies above. A beautiful day out in uh, Cape Town. Lovely. Just delaying that shot. And again, it's vacant. He's just using and manipulating the field. And that vacant area is exposed once again. And Edward Moore has raced along to 16. Uh, Eddie Moore just waiting for a little bit of width outside of stump again from uh, Keith Dudgeon. There's a bit of just enough width for uh, Eddie Moore just to get his back on it this time. Not going for power, going for a little bit of uh, precision and, and finesse. Just calmly guides this one to a sort of wide third man region. And a fast start it is, Eddie Moore. He's faced uh, nine deliveries and he's got 16, all of which have come from boundaries. Much better from Dajian. And he's also changed his angle. He wants to take away that, that width and that opportunity for Moore to, to guide towards that third man area. He tightens him up slightly, so a, a valuable dot. But Dajian has conceded nine. He's, he's got one delivery left. And we'll, then we'll see, will Erlang continue with, with his uh, own spin option? Or will we go to a, to a, a seamer? Time slightly shorter. He'll go for a quick single. He had to stretch those hamstrings, but uh, Edward Moore gets to the other end and another single then to Western Province. 18 without loss, that after the first two overs. Well, just before that over, Johan, we were chatting about the Proteus contracts and Tony DeZorzi getting one. And interestingly enough, in this game thus far, 12 balls bowl, Tony DeZorzi's only faced one. <laughs> I don't think he'll mind that too much, standing at the <laughs> other end, watching Edward Moore cut loose. He'll learn a lot as well from what uh, is happening, the way that the Tuskers are bowling. You spoke about Budaza, and it is Mbulaleo Budaza that's introduced into the attack. So we've seen spin to open, we've seen the seam of Dajian, and now we've got the left armour of uh, Budaza. So they've got, they've got a lo lot of options in their lineup. We know. Mbulela Budaza is a uh, wily character. He uh, can push it through if he needs to. He's got uh, fantastic variations as well. Right in front of our commentary position. He'll run away to Moore, who's on uh, 17. De Zorzi. He's faced the one ball, as you said, Tariq. Starts with a wide down the leg side. So the first thing, if you look at the field placement that the Tuskers are using currently, so often you, you see a slip or a gully and it, it's vacant next to the keeper. So there's, uh, they're all in the covers protecting one. Yeah, it's slapped away and it's beaten the infield. It's off to the boundary. It's another four to Moore. He's off to 21. He scored 23 without the loss of a wicket. Somewhat naughty by Budaza. We've already seen Moore is up to the challenge. He loves it there. 
Uh, not much width, but the length is there for uh, Eddie Moore just to rock back onto the back foot and then kind of pick his spot through the offside. Again, nobody deep on the boundary on the offside. The boundary rider is a deep square leg to uh, Eddie Moore. So it's easy pickings for, for Moore once he does get some back on it through the offside. Much better length and line by Mbuleleo Budaza. And you talk about the boundary runner. It's currently protecting the square leg boundary and we've got the third man out on the fence. It's one thing to have the, the, the field set, but you've got a bowl to that plan. That was good uh, execution by Mbuleleo Budaza. Healthy and run rate of uh, 10 and a half. More on 21 De Zorzi on one. That one probably feels as though that the uh, deep square is there for the bad ball as opposed to a, a strategic placement. And there goes the aerial route. Will this have enough pace? The answer is no. So an easy two. They'll think about a third, but they'll decide against it. Moore's intention is clear. If it's, it's, if it's there and, and he off sees the opportunity, he'll, he'll attack, especially in the first six overs. Now the question to you, I want to put on your captain's hat. Bring square leg up. I was, I was about to probably allude to, to that fact. Is, to me, it seems as though that the deep square right now is a wasted uh, fielder. Pudas is bowling it nicely outside the off stump, so rather give him the protection and the deep cover. This time, a lot straighter, and they'll easily jog through for a single. And the, the, the Zorzi will get a chance to, to face another delivery. We're on to 24. Good recovery by Mbulele Budaza. Started with a wide down the leg side, went for a boundary in the next delivery, but now he's pulled it back nicely. But the partnership and the opening partnership then worth 26 already. The Zorzi will get his first look at Budaza. Just a little bunch. Oh, it's wonderful timing by De Zorzi. That's his first boundary. No real effort, Tariq. As we just see it once again, it's not, not wide, but short enough for this time. Tony De Zorzi to wait for it, rock onto the back foot, and just punch this one beautifully off the back foot through the cover region. I think he's, uh, he's gotten bored on the other side of the field. Oh, and there is the, the edge. This time there is the, the, that protection. Oh, that's not going to help the Tusker scores. That's an unnecessary, let's call it an extra three runs that was conceded. They would have definitely always had the one, but the extra three is a bonus. And that takes the Zorzi to nine. It's a great start by those 34 without the loss of wicket. Not what Erlang would have been wanting. And what he would have wanted to see after three overs, his team under immediate pressure. Very far start from uh, World Sports Betting Western Province and a chanceless first three overs. No shot uh, play that was risky for them. And not a single maximum. It just shows you that in this game of T20 cricket, there's still uh, space and there's still want for normal, shall we say, cricketing shots. Yeah, I love what you've said there because it has been risk-free cricket. It's been good shots. The tactic is very clear. So the, the, the Tuskers have identified that the, there's no real lateral movement. They're still playing without any slips or gullies. Got fine leg in the area. Went for the over the top Edward Moore. But uh, this time, it, not, not coming off, but he'll still get the single. So they, they are playing with fine leg in the inner ring. A backward square on the fence as well. Dajian bowling, he's second over. So the field definitely hasn't changed. Ring field on the offside with the third man and the deep square out on the leg. But there hasn't been any short balls or anything to oh. sort of justify having the deep square. And exactly that's what happens for Tony Zoya. Over pitched by uh, Keith Dajian, just leans on this one and crashes it through the offside for four. 
begs the question, Johan, what is Deep Square still doing there when all, if not 95% of the boundaries have come through the cover region? Yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting, it's, it's difficult to understand. We haven't seen the bumper. Well, this time beats him, Matt. The Zorzi saw the opportunity, failed to make any contact. But, but the line that's been employed by the Tuskers has been outside off, and they've done that from ball one. Still hanging back, even with the intent that's been shown by both batters, Edward Moore and Danny Dezorzi, favouring the offside. It's a better length, but easily worked into the gap and down to third man for a single. Dezorzi will go on to 14. Moore has 25. It's 40 without the loss of a wicket when inside the fourth over. This power play has been very fruitful for the home team. World Sports beating Western Province. Oh, we saw it shorter than what it was. Maybe someone lucky to escape it. There was the intent, and the, the man out in the, on the square leg fence would have, would have anticipated something coming his way, but no contact this time from the Moor bat. It feels as though, had, uh, or from us just watching how Eddie Moore has been playing uh, from ball one, that that shot is, kind of goes against the grain of what, of what they've been doing, just uh, punching it through the offside. This one tried a wild swipe uh, across, looking to smash it onto the leg. Oh, that, now that was to the plan. Uh, if, you, if you just saw what happened before he ran in, Keith Dudgeon, he brought third man up into the inner circle and they dropped the second man onto the leg side boundary, went for the bumper, Moore fell to make contact. It's 40 without loss. Yeah, good. It's probably the first time that we saw that, that uh, bouncer come in. And not only that, they probably had all his fingers around because it seemed as though it looped a little bit. So deceiving uh, Eddie Moore. So good end to the over for uh, Dudgeon. Seems as though it's uh, one and done from the Weinberg end for Mbulelo Budaza as Michael Erlang grabs the, the ball once again. Still inside the power play and it's Erlang then. He opened the bowling, so back for his, uh, his second set of six. There's already just uh, full and straight and straight to the field as well. So with, uh, we've got a long off and then we've got a boundary run on the leg side so there's opportunities he, he has to find his, his length has to be good is that a ledge it is Erlang strikes it's the big scalp it is Tony Dezorzi who's walking back oh, beautiful from Erlang just uh, tucking up Tony Dezorzi a little bit this one yes a little bit shorter but close enough to him and Tony Dezorzi tried to manufacture that little cut shot Gets the top of the, the bat and a good take from uh, Zuma behind the stumps. You see, just uh, a little bit shorter and Dezorzi perhaps giving himself too much room as well. So you see him ending him, himself way down the leg side, but catch there to be taken and a good club work uh, by Zuma. So it's taken 4.2 overs for the Tuskers to make the breakthrough and Here's an interesting but uh, Johan coming in at number three for the uh, World Sports Betting Western Province is uh, Wayne Parnell. I don't think anybody would have seen that coming. Oh, it's lovely this format. It's uh, the, the surprise elements in so many ways. But the Zorzi, that's, uh, that's a big breakthrough for the Tuskers having conceded 40 runs. Brave captaincy as well. You have to also compliment Michael Erlanke. Brought himself back, had a plan, had the two boundary runners out in, in front of the eyes and he then invited, even if it was a small opportunity, he gave that opportunity to De Zorzi. He took the bait and also good glove work to initiate the, the, the breakthrough that the Tuskers have been looking for and has been so desperate for. Oh, it's an immediate shot. 
over the top, it will be the inner ring and it is Parnell who will start off and open his account with the boundary. I think immediately that answers the question as to why he's been sent uh, in at three. Want to uh, maintain the momentum that they that they built from uh, Eddie Moore and Tony Dezorzi early doors. Another international cricketer that walks out to the middle. So the intent is clear. Again it's tossed up. Oh, Parnell will feel that he missed out. He missed on, out on an opportunity. Somewhat slower by Erlang as well. And there, there is a boundary runner there, but Parnell was having none out of it. He was going to take it on every day of the week. Better length, but this time Parnell will work it into the gap and get a single. Been a good over by Erlang. Might as well have had uh, two in a row. But that's cricket for you. I think Erlang has, finished, has figured out that um, a bit slower through the air will uh, help you as a spinner. Lovely straight bat. Only a single, but uh, still more on to 26. Good over for the Tuskers. They found that breakthrough. One over remains in the power play. It's 46 for one. It's exactly the type of over that the Tuskers would have wanted. Not much damage in terms of runs and then also picking up the wicket of uh, Tony De Zorzi. So just wrestling back some momentum that was clearly with World Sports betting Western Province from the start. It's Eddie Moore that has given WSB Western Province that fast start. 26 not out. Tony De Zorzi who has uh, just departed for 14. So Dajian is whipped out of the attack. Budaza switches ends. Fine leg is in the inner circle, but he can't prevent the single. Interesting switch for Budaza to come from the uh, Calvin Grove end. Perhaps it's just the thinking from uh, Captain Erlang just to keep things fresh. Kind of keep the, the, the batters thinking. Yes, it might be the same bowlers, but a different angle. You know, different uh, sort of view. Could just play on the minds of the batters a little bit. Well, that's down the leg, but... Uh We'll wait for the umpire's signal. Was there some uh, thigh pad involved there? It is a leg by, a signal by the umpire. 27 to Moore, 5 to Ponnell. Three lefties at the top of the order for Western Province. Ponnell, obviously, uh, the intent was shown from ball one. So easier with a plan. Try and up that run rate, get them off to a, a good start. We've just been set. The foundation was set by the moore Zorzi partnership that yielded 40 it's moved on to 48 with four balls remaining in the power play. Well, this time Budaza, he's attacking the, the pads. There's a lot of space there, but the two extra runs then added to the Muetali. And that is 50 up for Western Province. Uh, the World Sports betting Western Province getting to 50. It's taken them just 34 balls and, as we mentioned, no maximums, but nine fours for the side in uh, orange and blue. Oh, that's a, a big one. And it's got enough legs. It will bounce. It bounce a couple of times before it goes over the fence. So another four to Edward Moore. He's on 33. Seems as though he's trying to find something. He's trying to get the ball into an area where he feels that uh, the batter would be a bit uncomfortable. However, Eddie Moore up to any sort of challenge that has been thrown his way thus far.
gives himself room more. He almost took Kudaza with him, and that's also off to the fence. And we're still going to change his approach, especially with time running out in the power play. 37 from 23. Again, it's pretty full from Budaza trying to get it in at the pads anymore. Gives himself uh, a bit of space to free the arms and uh, take cover. Budaza when came straight back at him, placed all the way to the boundary. Edimur continuing to uh, march along at the top of the order for Western Province. Just to be manufactured, is it? And when it's your day, it's your day, Tariq. You'll find the gap no matter what. The bumper was employed by Mbulele Budaza. No surprise there, but still, Edward Moore, presence of mind, knew where the gap was, manufactured the ball into exactly that part of, of the ground, helps himself to another boundary. He's on 41 of 24 deliveries. What a power play for Western Province. 62 for one. The solitary strike was uh, thanks to Michael Erlang. A good catch behind the stumps. The prize scalp of Tony Dezorzi who departed the scene for 14. But Moore's on 41, Parnell's on 5. 62 for 1. A fantastic start for WSB Western Province. Wanted to get as many runs as they could in the power play going at uh, just over 10 to the over. So they're setting themselves up for what could potentially be a massive score. And if uh, Eddie Moore continues in the fashion that he has, they'll be well on their way. Erlang, Erlang, oh, it's put down, it's put down. Oh, that could have been Erlang second, it should have been Erlang second. Big opportunity missed. Ponell had his heart in his throat there for a good few seconds, but the intention is clear from Wayne Ponell. If it's there, I'm going to swing. Now, important body language. Keep the heads up. Erlang's going to set that trend. He's got to show the example. The reverse sweep. It's flying off again. It's racing towards the boundary. We'll see who, who wins this race. Great fielding. Brilliant fielding by the Tuskers. Three more runs added to the province tally. It's more on to 44. First time that we've seen the reverse sweep used. Now this battle, Erlang Parnell. Comes out his crease. It's going to bounce. Bounce again. Uh, easily feel that this time. Good anticipation by the Tuskers boundary runner. And two more runs to the Parnell tally. You, you, just, you just feel something's going to give you. Parnell's not going to take a step back. Erlang thinks he's got his number. He should have had him. On the, in the first ball of the over, but the chance put down. It's conceded six halfway through the over. Now where's Parnell's boundary options? Where is he going to go? Again, it's tossed up straight back to Erlang. Uh, just a change in field just before that. Erlang bringing uh, the cover boundary field a little bit straighter. So two catches out in the deep on the offside. Goes out wide. He slaps this now, Parnell, and he goes big. He goes all the way at six. We were waiting. Something had to give. It was either going to come off or uh, Erlang was going to get his man. He sort of adjusted the field on the offside, thinking Parnell wants to hit him with a turn. Said this time, Parnell goes uh, across the face. Spotted the uh, gap sort of in the uh, cow corner region and grabs the first maximum for World Sports Betting Western Province of the innings. Erlang's stomach's going to be turning. He's going to feel this. Straight to backward point, and that's exactly where the catch went down. Brings to the end uh, another over. 74 for one. The Tuskers will feel it should have been two, but there's no should have been cricket. On L14, more 44. It just seems to be at this aura of confidence with uh, WSB Western Province when they play at Newlands. I think in all the competitions in the four day series and the one day cup, they kind of sort of you know, put big emphasis on putting in big performances at home, getting the wins at home. 
and uh, it's given him confidence and he won that uh, 50 over competition pretty much being in the hunt in the four day uh, throughout so they, uh, they definitely trophy hunting this season they've got one and I'm pretty sure that this would be a nice little cherry on top of, uh, of the cake for the season that they've had and everyone chasing the Warriors at the moment with 27 points sitting comfortably at the top of the log with the Lions in second position. World Sports Betting Western Province occupying third with 16 points. Change in bowling approach. It's a spin but not in the form of Erlang. And Tlebela is introduced. It's Manga and Tlebela. Uh, interesting uh, change. For Michael Erling definitely probably identified that uh, bowling from the Calvin Grover into the left hander hitting towards the Oaks is the longer boundary. So happy to give it to the left arm, Morphy. Ronald goes big. It's a big, bigger, biggest. It's into the seating. It's another maximum. Oh, he hit that sweetly. I just spoke about that being the longest, uh, the longest side of uh, of the venue, and Cornell first ball that he faces from Febela goes after him, absolutely muddles it, and sends it about uh, six or seven rows back, which is uh, from the pitch where they're playing at. That's a pretty big hit into that corner of the ground. Massive strike by Cornell. He's gone on to twenty. More on forty-five. He'll do it again. It's a replay. Will it carry? Will it carry? Yes, it will. Keith Dudgeon had his eye on that one all the way. He steadied himself. He readied himself. He was uh, in position to grab that, uh, that catch. And I think at the very last second, he realized Point Point now has got enough of this. But back to back maximums it is. We see Dudgeon keeping his eye on it and then realizing. That's going over my head. Absolutely loving it is uh, Wayne Parnell. He is uh, firing, having come in at uh, number three. Time for a boardroom meeting. Now, what do you do? You've conceded 13. The intent is clear. And Clabella under all sorts of pressure. The Tuskers under pressure. 87 for one. That's what they're looking at. And they see the scoreboard. It's flatter. It's quicker. It's wide outside off. Cornell fails to uh, make contact. There is a, a boundary sweeper out on the offside. And Tlebella. Much better, but Cornell will just squeeze this out in into the covers and help himself to a single, a rare single of the Cornell bat. Dealing in boundaries. He's on to 27. 88 for one. One ball remaining in the eighth over. Well, having conceded back to back sixes, and Tlebella has recovered nicely, but he needs a strong finish. He has conceded 14. You don't want this one to go for a boundary as well. There's enough space and work. Good presence of mind, thinking about the second double, the side against it. Partnership has raced along 48. It's come in no time, really. 88 for one. 89 for one. And that uh, brings to an end. Another over. It's 46 for Moore. He needs a boundary to get to 50. It's been pretty quick. 46 of 27. Bonnell on 27. The early momentum and the early partnership between uh, De Zorzi and Moore, which has been picked up again by Moore and Bonnell. Eddie Moore. Well, surprisingly, I would say, after being the dominant member in that uh, first partnership, has now played second fiddle to Pornell, who has come in and uh, swung at it from ball one. Tian Kukumur is introduced into the attack. 41 matches, economy of 4.2, base figures of 3 for 8. That was in Kabecha in the 2016-17 season. So Erlang keeps ringing the changes. No one allowed to settle. And that, that's been one of the, the ingredients that's worked for World Sports Betting Western Province. Great fielding of his own bowling by Kukumurst. 
I like what I've seen from him since he's been uh, active in the Staskers lineup, a valuable member. He's produced great performances with the bat, now asked to do something with the ball. It's a good start. You know, it's, not, it's nicely back of the length, hitting the pitch hard, not giving uh, any more, any sort of space to free his arms. Probably gets away with that one. They'll want to keep it quiet if they can. That is the 50 partnership. It's come off only 24 balls, Tariq. Edward Moore and Wayne Parnell. Parnell has contributed 27 to that 50 partnership. There is confirmation, just the, the breakdown between the two. Well, the opening partnership we saw no maximums being hit and all of a sudden since Wayne Parnell has come in, he's smashed three of them. All three maximums going his way. Parnell showing that he's uh, not all about uh, big hits. Can uh, nudge it around if needed and perhaps that's the plan from uh, Moore and Parnell with uh, Kukamur bowling his first over. Just let's have a look at him first. Let's see what he's about. And uh, in that, if he does give us the, the bad ball or the loosener, we will you know, put him away and put him under a bit of pressure. Oh, he tried the reverse slog and... Failed to pull it off. And that, that, that's credit to Tian Kukumu, really. He's, he's put some good pressure, good areas. So they feel that there's, uh, Edward Moore feels a, a change of approach is needed to try and get the boundary. Now I reckon Eddie Moore, as soon as he took God, said, I'm going to reverse <laughs> sweep. <laughs> because he got into position so early that Kukumu could have changed his mind three times. Uh, absolutely. This time he moves across his stumps. Straight to the field then. And we're too shy of uh, the, the 50 mark, the half century milestone. Well, this is good from, uh, from Kukumur. It's because of his bowling that he's now making the batsman. Or uh, at least the batters uh, decide uh, or try and change things. Eddie Moore firstly went for the reverse sweep, then moved around in the crease. Parnell. He'll stand and, and work this down to long on and again great over by Tian Kukum with brilliant areas and he's kept it to a, a four run over Erlang will look up and say great work Tian well, that is fantastic and that is uh, how you pay replay the fight that the captain has showed to you Tian Kukum after watching every single one of the bowlers before him get uh, hit to all parts of uh, all sports betting Newlands Comes in, doesn't do anything fancy, sticks the way, a simple lining length, tucking the batters up, and only concedes four in his uh, first over of the game. That's good to see, it's good to see a bowler come in when the, when the captain's giving you the ball, giving you the trust. Going, I'm just going to stick to what I know, I'm going to stick to what has worked for me, I'm not going to try and change the way uh, I do things and let's see what happens and uh, it's worked for, for Dian Gukumur in his first over You're sitting in the Western Province dugout and you're looking at the scoreboard, the halfway mark is approaching 93 for 1, sound base two batters set what's the target? What, what are you anticipating now? From this platform here, what, what's the bare minimum? One has to feel and uh, Get that to you, Johan, after this uh, delivery. As, uh, Cameron Dalport is, is now brought into the attack, and it seems like it's a deliberate ploy from uh, Erlang to get pace off the ball with the seamers. You know, Kukumura and Dalport not express pace. Yeah, it's interesting, Erlang is now using his sixth bowler inside 10 overs. This is slapped, but straight to the fielder. So to get to your point, Johan, of uh, what is the bare minimum, one does feel that you've got to look at uh, at least from this start, 180 as a very, very bare minimum. But ideally, if 
you can continue with this uh, momentum. Continue to tick the runs over. And this is also good to see that in T20 cricket as well, it's not just about the boundaries and the big hits. It's about finding those pockets, hitting the ball into the gap. Yeah, talking about the gap, Moore pushed quickly and helped himself to the two runs that he needed to bring up a half century. And what a knock it's been from Eddie Moore. 50 from only 32 deliveries. And of those uh, 32 deliveries, 11 of them were dots, eight fours. And uh, in terms of uh, Eddie Moore's career, just the uh, second time that he's gone past the half century. So he has certainly uh, picked up some good form at prison. Yeah, you talk about the reason I ask you about the, that 180 mark. Western Province, it, it, it's, it's, they've only scored 180 plus score on one occasion. That was against the men from the Northwest on the 13th of March. They scored 188. Dare I say that the Kukumur, the experience now of the Delport Kukumur combination has just, has just brought some calmness for the Tuskers, but can they maintain it? Another over that's only gone, gone for four, the Kukumur over went for four, one ball remaining, it's key. Parnell, well, he had the intent, but again, well, they'll have to push off the boundary. Moore is very quick. He turned immediately, anticipated the two, but the Tuskers will take that over and they'll say, it's another one that's only gone for six, a runner ball to complement the Kukumur over that went for four. That's 10 runs in the last two overs. After the start that they've had, Erlang will take it. It's still 99 for one at the halfway stage of the innings. No, I absolutely fully agree. This is exactly what uh, the AET Tuskers would have wanted, especially in this middle period, the, the, the post power play period is. Yes, WSB Western Province have gotten off to a very, very fast start. How do we try and bring it back? Uh, Erlang said, I'm going to give it to Kukumur and Dalport, not express pace, just seamers that can hit a spot and try and cramp this batsman up, which is what they've done in this last two overs. But they've got to maintain it. They've got to ensure that they continue to hit those marks if they are going to bowl their full complement out. It will take up eight overs, uh, and it will wrestle back some momentum for the AAT Tuskers. Well, it's a lovely sound of the bat again. When it, 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 you feel it deserved more, but it's only worth a single. Credit to Kukumur as the 100 comes up for Western Province. Moore 52, Parnell 32, both well set. 62 balls, that's what it's taken. But the last 13 balls has been very good for the Tuskers. Big hit, big hit. It's sailing, it's sailing. It's got air miles on it again. It is Parnell helping himself to another six. Now has been waiting for that over pitch Kukumur delivery. He's uh, been sort of back a length, cramping up these batters for the majority of his balls. And on the one occasion where he tries to search for something, it's in the arc for uh, Parnell. And just watched him as he hit it. He knew immediately that he had gotten more than enough on that one. And all the uh, maximums thus far for WSB Western Province has been off the bat of Wayne Parnell. It also had to come, uh, just the, the, I wouldn't say that the pressure was building, but the Tuskers were just clawing their way back, having produced two good overs, and then Parnell said, enough's enough, something needs to go, and identified the ball quickly and then launched into it. That's a, a good reply by Kukumur. Just pushing it out uh, outside the off stump. Can't really create the room there for Parnell. Not, not, not to go the aerial route in any case and launch. So that's where you want to stay away from, that, that area where Parnell can just get under the ball. Well, he wanted it again. It was there in the slot, but this time it's uh, on the grass. Parnell gets another single. As if Bonal is just uh, sitting in the crease and waiting for these uh, sort of over pitch deliveries so that he can get underneath it. Not able to uh, on uh, that occasion, like you mentioned, Jan, having gone for the boundary, Kukumur has brought the momentum again back. Having uh, just conceded 
one run in the subsequent two balls. Again, walks across, he stumps. Now there's a chance. Uh, for one second, I thought it's a chance, but the Moor bat is well oiled. He times that one and it flies over. You just, you, the sound of the bat, you just thought there's the opportunity that Kukumur has created. Yeah, he's also dragged this one from way outside the off stump. You combine that with, like you mentioned, Johan, hearing the, uh, the sound of the bat, you'd think that. Uh, Eddie Moore didn't get all of it, but he got enough to uh, get the ball to sail all the way over the boundary and has now surpassed his uh, previous best as Eddie Moore. Again, walks across his stumps. Kukumur followed him. It's been a fruitful over for Western Province. 15 coming from it. It spoiled Kukumu's first over, the figures reading two overs for 19, but again, considering that he only four went from his first over, 114 for one, Moore and Parnell both well set, 59 for Moore, Parnell on 39. You look at this batting lineup and you go, well, if we get a wicket, in walks a guy like Carl Verena. We don't need to talk about uh, his type of form and, and what he has produced in, in recent times. The spoiled for choice. There's uh, definitely enough uh, firepower still to come for WSB Western Province, like you mentioned, Verena. Channel Bird is still there waiting in the wings. He's uh, had a great start to the CSA T20 Challenge. Galport deservingly gets a second over. We're trying to just uh, manufacture the ball and work into the areas more. And then we still got uh, George Linder as well. Who Absolutely. Can, uh, pretty much uh, clear <laughs> any. Uh, any ground in, in, in world cricket? Well, after this start, they're probably drawing straws and saying, who wants to go next? Uh, I'm guessing it's a case of who wins the race <laughs> to the boundary. Well, that's it signaled wide. Budaza is chasing hard after this. Dalput pushed it down the leg side. Probably just the thought process around what were attempted on the first ball of the over. That's a, a bonus boundary plus the wide, so that's a, a five-run bonus to Province. Not that they need it, but it's moved them along to 119 for one. Got a feel for Zuma. Absolutely. He was shaping up to lap it down the leg side, so he's anticipated that, moves to the leg side, and then Moore doesn't get a touch. Much better from Del Port. I've seen, especially from, from this side, working the ball towards the square leg, they, they, they've pushed hard. The, the, the value of a single, the value of twos. You spoke about it earlier, not all about the boundaries. Well, Bonnell says, unless I'm batting. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, where, where the uh, pitch is situated uh, at, at the ground today, which is closer to, to, the railway, uh, to the railway stand, when hitting towards the Oaks and the, and the, northern, uh, the northern Pavilion, there's big gaps and big pockets in, in uh, sort of the middle wicket uh, region. Well, again, he laps. Uh, this time there is a contact. It's coming towards the boundary. And again, it seems that the, the boundary rope has won. We'll have to wait for confirmation. They have completed uh, another one, but certainly worth a look. Finally, Moers tried that on, on a number of occasions. There is the, the cancellation signal. So I'm not sure if you picked it up, Johan. So as uh, Budaza went to field the ball, the, the umpire had uh, assumed that we gone for a boundary. So he said yes, four. Absolutely. Well, he had me convinced as well. A brilliant fielding by Budaza. Let's also give him the credit that's due. Oh, there's no second thing. Umpire well positioned, but uh, almost. It's an old saying about never run on a misfield. Yeah, 100%. Um, and yes, the experience of uh, Parnell able to stop his momentum very quickly and then turn, him, turn himself around. But um, good for, for Western Province uh, at the moment in maintaining uh, this partnership. It's now grown to 85. Again, a lot of movement in the crease by Moore. 
Delport followed him. Results in a single. And that's that the area there is that pocket that uh, that I have been speaking about. It's just getting those balls there is uh, a little up shot from uh, Eddie Wuhr. Makes its way to the boundary. Certainly does seem from that replay that uh, the uh, umpire was uh, correct in signaling for. Although, uh, unfortunately for him, he doesn't have uh, the replay to look at like we do. So you've got to make a, a decision and from where he was standing, he couldn't uh, make out whether or not that I touched the boundary. So going off uh, what the one would only assume what the player would have told him. But be that as it may, it's still three runs. It's the end of uh, that over. So after 12, WSB Western Province up to 126 for one. Still firing at uh, just over 10 runs to the over. And uh, Johan, that 200 is still looking very much on the cards. Yeah, absolutely. I, we're talking about that 180 mark. And I guess that it will keep shifting the more they go, deeper they go into this innings, 126 for 112 overs. Erlang is back, he's rotated himself. Again, should have picked up a second wicket on that analysis. One for 26 of his three. This is his last one. He's going to Moore on 64. It's short. Maybe lucky to get away with that one, straight to the fielder. It does seem like a surface that is uh, favoring the slower bowlers, at least for now. Bowled by Erlang. And, and to your point, I mean, we apart from Erlang's first over, we he played with, we operated with a first slip. We haven't seen a slip cordon of any sorts or gully, for that matter, since over one. No, no, hundred percent. Definitely. I guess after that over, they they figured that there's not much lateral movement in the pitch and nothing overhead as well to get the ball to swing. So no need then for, for those slip fielders to be in the catching positions. It's rather try and minimize uh, what we can. It's a very interesting field placing from Erlang. If you look at the, the behind square region, he's got that third man backward of square, and he's got that point. So three, three players protected, oh, and wow. still Barnell works, works it into the gap and helps himself to four. Uh, good work. From uh, Wayne Parnell, we saw the ball before coming down the track using his feet. On this occasion, just hanging back slightly. Waiting for it, this one a little bit longer and then crushing it off the back foot through uh, that cover point region. Beating the uh, solidary fielder on the uh, cover boundary. Again, it's a big hit to get the ball down there. So Parnell. Gave it everything, but uh, and he gets the single. So Erlang's over has gone for six. This is his last one. And that's potentially just one of those things for Parnell. When he does hit it, he hits it. And uh, when it doesn't come off, he, <laughs> he looks a bit silly. And I say that with the utmost respect, uh, Barney. But again, it's straight to the field at 132 for one. It's, uh, Erlang's done a good job. I, I think he's, he, his figures is probably not a true testament to, to what he's done out there today. One for 33, he's four is done, so they'll need a change from his end. But the slow options, as you said, it, it, it's definitely been the go-to recipe. We've seen Dalport's variations. We've seen Kukumur, two overs for 19. Dalport, two overs for 17. Erlang, four overs, one for 33. So... That eight overs they'll take, but if you look at the, the, the seam, Dudgeon was good as well. Two overs for 16. Budaza, slightly expensive. Two overs for 31. And Tabela, the spin option as well. He's one over, cost 15. So they, they, they've kept the momentum, and I think Erlang did, did deserves credit. He, he's, he's done a good job. Delport will go into his third over, having conceded 17. Moore set on 66. Bonnell on 45. Moore on strike. Goes straight, no better place than straight, and it is uh, another maximum. It's right there in the eye line for anyone, I'm sure. His eyes uh, lit up as this delivery 
came down from uh, Cameron Dalport, who we know is of uh, not much uh, pace. So when it's up there and it's in the slot, it's uh, easy for a, a batter who is uh, on 60 at that time, or at least 66, to just free the arms. Oh, he's, it's there again, it's there again, and he fancied it. Just the elevation lacking on this occasion, but uh, no, absolutely the full extension of the arms is what we saw from that hit from Moore, 72 from 45. It's been a brilliant knock, well supported by Parnell, who's played more than a supporting role. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. It's flying again, it's off again, same result, deeper, bigger, six more. Brings up uh, the 100 run uh, partnership as well between uh, Eddie Moore and Wayne Parnell. The partnership taking just 50, 60 deliveries, seven maximums, and five fours. The contributions pretty much even. Eddie Moore with uh, 53 and Parnell contributing 45. But what I've noticed that there's two maximums that uh, Eddie Moore has hit. It's been about timing, the one in the middle. The dot ball in the middle of uh, those two maximums, he wanted to go after it and he wanted to look for, for the power shot. Whereas the, uh, the maximums, it was just pure timing hitting through the line and not trying to overhit it. And that's good to see uh, a bat is able to do that immediately after trying to stand force a shot out of nothing. Well, well now I'm not getting all of it. So it allows Budaza to run around and do the, the fielding. Ponell on to 46. Muan 79. 147 for one. Delport. One ball. They desperately want a dot. They want to build some sort of pressure, but it's pretty difficult with these two cutting loose. And cutting loose. Won't find the fence on this occasion, but Moore will take over to 80. Now the eventful over from a Western Province perspective, 15 coming off it. Delport's figures, three overs for 32. It's 148 for one. Uh, Western Province have got uh, themselves in an excellent position. They have set themselves up for this last six to have a full on go and try and maximize the runs and we just conceded one or oh, just having one wicket that has fallen and I've got a 108 run partnership between uh, Moe and Bonnell at the moment Jonathan Bird just uh, stretching and loosening cells up so perhaps it would be John O'Bird that will come in next and continuing the left hander streak and <laughs> what actually... would be nice is that if if he does come in next and a wicket falls when he's there, then George Linder comes in and might as well make it five in a row. <laughs> An exhibition of the left-handers. You know, I would love to know if that probably has ever happened with the top five batters, or at least the five batters to come in, who have been all left-handers. Great trivia question. Budaza. Oh, Budaza, it's a one bounce. It's a nasty bounce. It's four more. Well, if it's not your day, it's not your day. Even, even the ones that go straight to the fielders find a way to go to the boundary. That's uh, unfortunate for Bolelo Budaza. He can afford a smile. It's probably saying, you know what, what must I do? Do I really deserve this? This onslaught and this bad luck. 150 comes up for Western Province. 152 for one. Move on to 84. Budaza's figures 35 conceded of the 13 legal del deliveries that he's bowled. It's up again. Straight drive, but uh, there is protection. Uh, before that ball, Budaza had conceded six fours in his opening two overs. That was the seventh one that, they've took, that, that they took off him. And Barnell's not going to change his approach. He's four shy of a 50. And let's remind each other, he was dropped. He was dropped early doors. Well, the, the, the first ball he, he faced, he went uh, over the inner ring and, and just cleared it. And then offered a chance at backward point, put down. The Tuskers will rue that missed opportunity. Budaza. So this time it's uh, up in there again. Man getting under it. Surely this time the Tuskers will hold on to it. 
And the partnership is finally broken. 113 runs for the second wicket. A brilliant knock by Pondell. Comes to an end. Now, Pondell, he wasn't going to change uh, the way, or at least change his approach. He was going to go out swinging. And it did as though, also, it did seem to me as though just before this over was bowled, he gave a bit of a signal to the dugout and the coaching staff to say that sort of prepare the next batter because I'm just going to swing and uh, get yourselves ready because I might just go out. Uh, I think perhaps he, he might have uh, run out a bit of steam in that innings. We do obviously know that uh, it would seem as, as though for me that uh, Ronal might uh, still be uh, observing the, the month of Ramadan. So he, he could potentially still be fasting, so wasn't able to take on any liquids uh, in his innings. But he does go for 46 of uh, 28 balls. Bold by Budaza, caught by Lebela. And it's the second wicket that falls for World Sports Betting Western Province. And that gives way to uh, John O'Bird on his uh, return to the lineup to come in at uh, number four. And it is the fourth left-hander for <laughs> WSB uh, Western Province, the fourth consecutive left-hander, should we say? I mean, in your days when you when you played cricket, it was it wasn't something. Well, when I was at school, you, you definitely it was a rarity. We we didn't have any lefties in our lineup, and that went on to provincial level as well. Now it's uh, the, the first four walking out for Western <laughs> Province, all batting left-handed. Nice and full from Budaza. I think lefties over the years have been dime a dozen. And you know, when you came across a left-hander in, in a team that you played against or, or you saw on TV, you, you were amazed that you know, somebody that is playing the same uh, sport as you, but it just seems like doing it other way around. <laughs> so be it bowling, be it batting. And I think that's probably why there's always been a premium on a left-arm quick and, and left-arm batters at the top of the order. It gives you that variety. Well, this time a swing outside the off stump and misses. So, bird on one, Mua on 85. And we've, we've seen world class cricketers, left handers that's been produced in various countries. Think about South African greats. You can probably sit and watch them the whole day. It was difficult enough for us as right-handers. <laughs> watch them master the art. A lot of movement again by Moore. Finds the cover fielder. Helps himself to another single. So it is Moore and a bird batting for Western Province. 153 for one. Good finish to the Budaza over, having conceded the boundary of the first ball. And credit to him. Kept his nerve, got the wicket. He'll feel better about life, having had an indifferent start to his match. Two pretty expensive overs, but um, he's come back nicely. So with uh, five overs left in the uh, World Sports Betting Western Province innings, 155 for two, still... Uh, going at a smidge over 10 runs to the over and perhaps feels as though that uh, the AET Tuskers would need to go bang bang very very quickly try and get Eddie Moore as quickly as they can get two new batters out there John O'Bird having uh, just gotten to the crease but similarly it's uh, going to be interesting to see the tactic of uh, John O'Bird no, not potentially one to go big from the onset. So much uh, in the four, in the likes of uh, uh, Tony, uh, uh, at least a, a Wayne Parnell or George Linder were able to go from the start. The bird likes to build his innings, so it's going to be interesting to see how he goes about. And Sabella's back into the attack. Could have left that, he would have been rewarded with a, a wide, but uh, got some back, to, uh, well, it was off the pad, so. A single to the tally. Labella's first over going for uh, 15. 
Arnold took a particular liking to Lebela, clearing the ropes uh, on two occasions, and it seems as though Captain Erlang has given him a bit of protection on the leg side. Even with the new batter. Oh, trouble, 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 out! Brilliant fielding by the Tuskers in a circle, and that's Bird on his way. Well, they often say one brings two, and in this, in this instance, that's exactly what's happened. Well, Bird will feel, he'll feel very uh, distraught at this stage. He's seen everybody in front of him. Well, Bard de Zorzi, who made 14, but for the last two, they've enjoyed their time out in the middle. And you feel that Bird sold himself down the river. Called the single. Great fielding by the Tuskers. Absolute suicide, this from John O'Bird. Hits it uh, decent enough, but favorable bounce for the AT Tuskers field. It does look as though it was the uh, skipper Erlang. And uh, bounced nicely up into, into his, uh, his mid-region, able to get the ball away quickly. Flebella doing the rest to get rid of... Uh, John O'Bird, I am I'm a bit disappointed now, Johan, uh, WSB, Western Province, not giving us what we wanted to send George Linda in at, uh, at five and keep the left-hand streak going. Instead, uh, they've sent through the uh, captain, Calvarena. And I do see George Linda out there in the dugout. <laughs> it's probably Fully bad it up. Uh, they probably said, no, we're not going to go for the record. <laughs> Uh, despite that wicket, uh, at least for uh, WSB Western Province, Eddie Moore is still there. The set batter is still in there. And his approach won't change. It's another beauty. It's straight out of the middle. It's another six. Moore on to 92. And Lebella started this over so well. Leg by the wicket was produced from a run out. And now the six from the bat of Moore who moves on to 92. That's, uh, that's good to see from Eddie Moore. Yes, he's lost two partners uh, very, very quickly. But he's uh, opted to continue with what has gotten him to 92. Continuing to play his shots. If it's there uh, to be hit, he's going to hit it. Just trying to have a look at the... Uh, WSB Western Province uh, dugout as one of the coaching staff uh, just came down. A lot of movement again goes straight and for more the power of the Moor bat and he's he's just decided this is where I'm going and you can't protect that. You can't protect if it's off the middle if the power is there you just can't you can't put anyone there. Yeah, so the first one from uh, Eddie Moore was it straight and hard in the air this one again but flat and Klebela Try to get a hand to it. it. Cannot prevent the boundary. One hit away, Eddie Moore. Well, that's touched the umpire off the, the bowler's hand onto the umpire, but he'll, he'll still get a single. So Moore on to 97. What a knock. 97. Or well, 56 deliveries. Calvarena then on strike facing uh, his first delivery. And the reason I say you've got to protect that, just for our, 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 our viewers who who's probably new to the game, you can't play someone directly in front of the side screen. So as much as you would like to, it's, it's not allowed. Oh, typical Verena, just a, a <laughs> nice touch off the mark straight away. Yes, and that's what he'll need to do. Feed Moore as much as possible, get yourself in, get your eye in, and then take over if need be, become the aggressor and if Moore does the part. But there's another individual milestone that's uh, winking in the Moore camp, three shy of the hundred. Would, uh, would be a big achievement for uh, Eddie Moore. He's got uh, three runs to get to that milestone, but Jan, I'm pretty sure that that last ball of the of the uh, Klebela over must have felt a bit strange. For the first time <laughs> in this innings, 15.6 ball, or the, the, the final ball of the 15th over. The, uh, one of the bowlers finally got to bowl to a right hand. Well, Erlang had to probably be a reminder that he had to change his field. <laughs> well, Kukumura is back in the attack. He's uh, going to bowl his third over. Four to go. 168 for three. Six. 
just angling into the legs and, and well worked into the gap by Verena. And the attention falls back on Moore. Verena just checking if uh, Kukumur was going to stay over the wicket or going to change his angle, but over is the answer from Kukumur. I like what you said earlier on, Johan. Verena, it's all he needs to do is just feed Eddie Moore the strike. Let him you know, get to the milestone. If he wants to kick on from there, he can, but just continue to, to, to feed him. He's the one who's eyes in. It's a bit of a wick, but it's going towards that fine leg boundary. And it's going to reach the boundary. It's the 100 for Moore. Off he goes on a run, a celebratory run. Well deserved, and you can just see what it means to him. He's had quite the year as well, Edward Moore. 101 or 57 balls. Take a bow, Eddie Moore. Product of Grey Eye. I can see what that means to uh, Eddie Moore, the maiden T20 century it is for him. 11 fours, four maximums. And what has been a remarkable innings is that he went from ball one. He didn't uh, wait, he didn't buy his time. And that's perhaps the first sort of shot that we've seen from him where he's completely just lost his form and lost his shape. But it matters little because there's no how column. There's just how many. Oh, and it's, it's almost an action replay, Tariq, but you, you called it before that. If he gets to the century, he's going to go on. He's going to kick on. There's enough batters to come. It's another week. Kukumur, credit to him. He employed the same line and length. This time the inside edge onto the stumps, but Moore has done some serious damage in this innings. Credit to him. 101 from 57 balls. He'll treasure this knock for the rest of, of his cricketing career and probably thereafter as well. Verena is a two from two. He's going to be a new man joining and now they'll have to find a way just to get to that desired outcome where they feel the, the, the score should be. But taking nothing away from Eddie Moore. What a knock we've been treated to. He impressed, especially the way he played straight. He attacked at the right times. The last couple of shots, not the, the Eddie Moore that, we, that we've seen throughout this knock. The way he got to his 100, but he got there nonetheless. Three-figure score, did the damage, put Western Province in prime position. And now 173 for four. He can walk off with pride. That was the, the, the way he got his 100. Just look at that run. Not the shamsy one that we used to. The shoe stayed on as well. Uh, it was... Uh... Very important innings from uh, Eddie Moore. And it's good to see an opener converting the innings. You know, more often than not in the T20 game, we see an opener come out, uh, go sort of guns blazing from ball one, get to about 20 or 30 and then throw his wicket away. Eddie Moore went guns blazing from the start and treasured his wicket, kept the shape nicely on all of his shots. And perhaps as uh, the, uh, the tiredness kept in towards the back end of the innings, lost his shape a little bit. But you know, once you've gotten to 100 as an opener, we can, we can forgive you for, for trying to just go again from, uh, from the very next ball. Even if you do lose your shape and lose your wicket the way uh, Moore has done, it's okay because you've gotten the team exactly what they need. You know, like what you've said, I, I think that what, what impressed me the most, there's no doubt he has the power game as well, but he played good cricketing shots and yeah. found value for it, especially at the top of the innings. Erlang produced the, I mean, we go back to that first over, the three ball, first three balls was dot balls. They, 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 they found the bounce, they, 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 the pace of the pitch, they settled in. I say they, Dezorzi went for 14, and then Ponell assisted him as well. So he took a lot of that early pressure away from upping that run rate, a good decision to bring Ponell in at three. And, and Moore was, was able to feed off Parnell's energy and what he achieved in his uh, stay at the crease and then finally converting that into a three-figure score. But, but, but just the way he went about it, really no shots in anger bar the last two. You could probably say that that was out of character. But the 100 is on the board, 101 from 58 deliveries. There's Parnell's confirmation, the 46 from 29 very key in the context of where we find ourselves from a, a run perspective. 176 for four. Brilliant platform with 18 balls remaining. 200 is certainly on here. 200 and above. Yeah, we, we did mention that, you know, minimum 180. I think now they will probably say minimum 200.
after after where they are, 24 runs away from the uh, double century mark, and with the likes of George Lynn and Calvarain in the middle, certainly 200 has got to be a bare bare minimum. And then what that does is that it gives their bowlers something a little bit extra to bowl at. So you're kind of giving yourself extra cushion, and you're giving the bowlers also the confidence. Keith to, 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 to know that you know your, your batters have gone there, they've done the job, it's now our turn, and they've had 20 overs to look at the wicket, know that the uh, slower balls and, and, and the off-speed balls are, are the ones that have been working. So I would not be surprised when uh, Western Province comes into bat that they'll open up with uh, George Linder and, and perhaps even Carl Simmons. I, I, would, I, would, I would think that uh, Carl Verena would be that brave to go, to go open with both left-arm spinners. I totally agree with you. I think it, they've, they've learned a lot out of what they've seen from a Tuskers perspective in the, the first 17 overs that's been produced. And Kukamur, to me, was, has, has really been... One of, the, one of the good performers in this bowling lineup, who's been under tremendous pressure throughout. Erlang as well, again, we can give credit to the way he operated, but, but they've just found a way the whole time. Western Province, throughout the innings, they haven't really had quiet overs. Kukumu's first over went for four, but, and Delport's first one for six. But apart from that, they've really maintained a healthy run rate that's, that's over 10 to the over. 178 for four, Verena on four, Linda on three. Both can find the boundary, Dudgeon, with his third over. So with three remaining, you could probably feel that Dudgeon's going to bowl out. He'll bowl this one and, and, and the last. Straight to the field there, but uh, be a, another single. Yeah, well, we definitely saw with, those, uh, with the first two deliveries of uh, Keith Dudgeon, he definitely went off pace. He had all the fingers uh, across the ball and took pace off the ball, which I feel is probably what they needed to do more of throughout the innings. They did it in spurts, just not uh, long enough or, or long enough periods. Oh, that's going uh, big as well. It's uh, in the slot, clears the fence. It is the shorter part of the boundary as well. And Verena helps himself to a maximum. Well, that's probably what has hurt the Tuskers throughout the innings, there's always just been one or two balls and over that's just been in the slot. Just allowed the uh, WSB, which the province batters, to free their arms, get the ball to the boundary. This time he goes straight. In Dajian, it's very evident as well that he's, he's employed that slower ball tactic. Started with the slower ball, the one that went for six was the slower ball as well. Picked up beautifully by Carl Verena at the length. Distance was never going to be a problem. What a difference uh, a few days makes in, uh, in the game of cricket. Keith Tajan was uh, absolutely on fire up at, uh, up at the Wanderers over the weekend. Shorter length. Oh, and just short of the field there as well. Half a chance. Dajan really set the tone for the Tuskers against the Lions where he picked up three wickets in the first over. That really set the tone for them and eventually got them to their, their first victory of, uh, of the campaign. A few days later, rocks up at uh, World Sports Betting Newlands and uh, comes up against a determined Western Province outfit. From his three overs thus far, he's uh, going at nine to the over. So. This is why we love the game, Johan. Well, one day you could be on top of the world and the next day you're brought back down to back down to get your feet on the ground. Absolutely. You can be in the greatest nick and uh, score a century. And, and next week, Ebola is your number first up. That's the beauty of the sport. And it's a sport for everyone. Budaza. Penultimate over of the innings. It's full, it's aerial, and is it taken as well? It is. Oh, Badaza, it's his second one. 
they would probably say that with all the bad luck that he's had, that uh, that full toss maybe deserved some treatment, but come the, the hands on this occasion. Yeah, again, it's another seam bowler for the Tuskers, bringing out the slower delivery back of the hand. It is from uh, Mbulelo Budaza. And uh, even though it's a low, wide full toss, George Linder stretches for it, tries to clear the uh, long off boundary. And unfortunately for Linder, does get enough of it, finds the, the fielder at uh, long off. That and not always the, the easiest ones to hit. Definitely, the, it's not a guarantee that you could put that one away. It's sometimes the, one of the more difficult ones to, to get away. So there's five wickets down for WSB Western Province, and in comes uh, one of two debutants, Valentine Kitime. So made his uh, debut in the other formats uh, throughout the season, so uh, picking up uh, three out of three in terms of uh, caps on offer at uh, WSB Western Province. Memorable season. Budaza, two for 38. Oh, he went across the line, inside edge onto the pad, but get off the mark, Valentine Kitime. I don't want to lose any momentum now. 188 is a pretty imposing score. There's, there's no debating that. But just from a, a mental perspective, it's, it's going to hurt the Tuskers walking into their dugout thinking, wow, we've got to chase 200. You've got to maintain a, a run rate of 10 plus from the onset. That puts you in a different frame of mind. 188 is, is imposing enough and difficult enough as it is. 10 balls remaining in the innings. Verena cuts that straight to the fielder. A bit of pace on on this occasion from uh, Budaza. See Verena trying to rock back and get it past the uh, sort of deep point fielder. Doesn't get it past him. But uh, what would be Katime's approach? Does he uh, simply just take the one and hand it back over to uh, his skipper? to uh, take on the bowler, or does he back himself and uh, try and take on Budaza, who one feels perhaps probably going to revert back to the uh, off-speed ball. Oh, no, and he loses his leg stump. The, the answer was there. The answer to your question, Tariq, what do you do? You just carry on. The platform has, has been put in place. You just go on bat on ball. See if you can get us a, a couple of boundaries would have been the, the, the request. But again, credit to Bolelo Budaza. Never left his mark and his length. Maintained his approach. Angled into the legs. And uh, took out the leg stump. And that's always a, a good sight for a fast bowler when the leg stump, or any stump for that matter, goes uh, cartwheeling out of the ground. And Budaza has pulled up this one back nicely. It was expensive in his first two overs, picked up two in this over, so three for 40 from uh, 3.4. No one just felt as though Ketime was uh, perhaps given an instruction, you've got a license, young man, go, uh, go and have some fun. And well, the very second ball that he faces from Budaza, the off cutter on this occasion, to see him roll the fingers over it, Ketime just loses his... Uh, his head, perhaps getting his, you know, that, that old adage of you got to keep your eye on the ball. Picks his head up a bit too early, through the shot too early, and uh, sees his uh, leg stump take a cartwheel. Well, surprise, another left hander. <laughs> we could have had six in a row, you are. <laughs> and then Buren could have come in after that for seven, we might as well. Kept all the righties for right at the bottom. Well, just to make it more interesting, both are Kyle. So <laughs> <laughs> we've got a right and a left hand at the crease, both Kyle. Makes calling in, uh, quite easy. Good single for Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> so Simmons gets himself off the mark again from uh, Budaza off speed. Perhaps uh, got away with one there. But fortunately for him, perhaps the uh, incoming batter being new to the crease doesn't have the uh, lay of the land in terms of the speed of the pitch. So uh, at least seven balls it is remaining in the AET Tuskers bowling innings. We're going to want to restrict 
WSB Western Province 200, 200, there's 10 runs and 7 balls. We can kind of treat it as uh, the second innings. So does Verena think about the single and take on the last over? He was thinking about the bigger hit. That brings to a close the Budaza effort this afternoon. Three overs for 41, but again, credit to the way he pulled back his last two overs. Two wickets in uh, his final six deliveries. And uh, that leaves Western Province on 190 for six. Verena has 12. Simmons has one. Simmons brand new to the crease. Ten shy of that 200 mark with an over to go. Dutchian will bowl it, so they'll stick with the, in, the, the, the seam approach. But Budaza will feel a lot happier about life. Really had some bad luck as well. I remember his reintroduction into the attack. First ball took a nasty bounce, escaped the field, and went for four. And you can quite easily lose your head and say, well, it's just not going to be my day. But credit to the man, who, the way he's come back and he, the way he, he picked up those two last wickets. Now it's up to Dajian. Can he, uh, can he keep Province from, from getting to 200? That slower ball, back of the hand, it's a good start by Dajian. It almost seems now, Johan, as though that minimum of 200 that we've been uh, calling for could potentially uh, be a little bit uh, of a stretch at this point with the uh, new batter, Carl Simmons, uh, at the crease. And even Eddie Moore, perhaps even all the way up until George Lindo was there, you felt as though it was on the cards, still very much attainable. Having just lost those wickets at uh, regular intervals could just be too far at the moment. It's full. It's if you beautiful. Play a shot like oh, that. it's a beauty. An absolute stunner <laughs> from Carl Simmons. Something tells me Simmons has got an earpiece in his ear and just heard <laughs> me say that uh, 200 could be a bit of a stretch and decided I'm going to show you something. And uh, nice little inside out over extra cover off a seam bowler. Fantastic shot that from Carl Simmons. Good anticipation. I mean, he saw the, the slower ball first up and then said, OK, I'm going to just give myself some room and then try and work the ball uh, over the, the cover fielder, which he successfully did. So he's on to seven. Short fine leg Budaza is in place, but uh, can't prevent the single. So this will bring Verena back on strike with only three runs needed now for that uh, 200 mark. It was a, a, a telling blow by Simmons. It would just be also a sort of a mental advantage to WSB Western Province to get to that 200 run mark, like you mentioned early on, Johan. Tusk is going into, the, going into the batting innings thinking they've got to go at 10 from the start. Mm. Just mentally, it is, a, it is a big sort of a momentum shift in a game that's only last 20 overs. So they've, they're dropping back the, the square leg for Verena. And they're bringing in the man on the, the backward point boundary. He'll come into the inner circle. So is this a double bluff? Does he go short? Does he go full outside off some Verena moves? And then wicks it across the line and wicks it far and far oh, away. Catch. Whoa, there's a fielder there, but he's, he's not wearing Tusker's clothing. And that is the 200 on the board. Yeah, we've asked for it. We said minimum 200 for WSB Western Province and uh, who else but the captain shimmies across and uh, drags this one from outside off stump. He knew immediately he got all of it. Just keep your eye on that guy in, uh, in the crowd. Does really well to steady himself to take that catch. Again, a lot of movement by Verena. Just taps this around the corner. It's another four. It's going to hurt Dudge and it will hurt the Tuskers. They just brought the, the fielders in, trying to protect the, the, the boundaries. They can't prevent it on this occasion. Just the versatility again from Verena. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. He showed the power game, and now he shows the touch game as well. Perhaps uh, had his heart in his uh, throat there for a split second, having gone that far outside of his off stump to try and lap this one around the corner, but got enough of it to get it past the stumps and to the boundary. And... Uh, all of a sudden, the three boundaries in this over only gets them past the 200 run mark. It again just takes the valuable momentum with them into their bowling innings. Sort of, dare one say it, knock the uh, wind out of the Tusker sails before they even got a chance to bat.
Yeah, absolutely. Interest on the investment. And interesting, also worth noting, Verena has taken, he's taken guard outside of stump. Now, they've, they still have the, the two men behind the stumps, the, the third man and the fine leg in the, in the circle. Verena now moves across and then belts it straight. Now, they're probably going to push for two and take the risk and say, well, it's going against them. My prediction <laughs> and feeling that 208 is enough. They're not going to sacrifice the wicket unnecessarily. Still a very productive last over that yielded 18 runs. So Dudgeon's final analysis reads four overs and 45. But Western Province will feel elated with their effort at, at the crease. 208 for six. Set up beautifully by the century from uh, Eddie Moore. 101 at the top of the order. Well supported by Wayne Barnell who came in at three. He contributed 46, and then a little late cameo by Carl Verena at the end, 23 not out, well supported by Simmons, who, who smashed one out of the ground. He finishes on eight from the four deliveries that he, that he faced. Verena, 23 from 11, but there's a summary of your scorecard. 208 for six, Moore was brilliant. 101 from only 58 deliveries. Barnell was quick, having been dropped at backward point, offered a chance early on, 46 from 29 deliveries. Verena 23 not out. De Zorzi was the first man to go with his score on 14. Bowling analysis. Uh, not, you could probably give credit to, to Budaza. From an analysis perspective, it, it looks good. 3 for 41. He, he, he went, took some tap in the first two overs. Came back nicely and uh, produced the goods for his captain. Erlang opened the bowling. Led from the front. Good, for, good start by him. Opened with, with spin and then picked up a wicket as well. That of the Zorzi who nicked one to, to the keeper. Tian Kukumura, I feel, did very well. One for 27. Uh, asked some telling questions. Uh, nine to the over. His analysis. Delport also weighed in. His last over went for, for, for plenty. But 32 from his three overs. It's now up to the Tuskers to get together and say, how do we go about chasing 209 well there's only one real way of doing it and it's going to be a charge from the front and someone's going to put put on the pads take on the leadership and say this is for me to take on the role oh for a couple of players to say we're going to have to play the aggressive role take chances because you're not going to score 209 if you're not going to fire from with all cylinders and guns blazing from the start but from a batting perspective the hosts the host today in any case in, in, in at newlands has uh, done the business they've put together 208 for six can the Tuskers change or chase that 209 runs? We'll find out in a bit.
Good afternoon and welcome back to World Sports Betting Newlands. It is wonderful to have you along for the CSA T20 Challenge match between uh, the Tuskers, the AET Tuskers and World Sports Betting Western Province. The halfway mark of the match, 208 for 6, that is what Western Province put together. Thanks mainly to Edward Moore's wonderful century at the top of the order. 101 from 58 balls, ably supported by Wayne Parnell, who came in as a surprise number three, and he produced 46 from 29 deliveries. And that really gave the momentum to the host to put together the 208 for six. A late cameo by Carl Verena propelled them over that 200 mark. And now it's up to the men from uh, KwaZulu Natal Inland to see if they can chase down this formidable total of 208 for six. At the top of the order, they do have Cameron Delport, the seasoned campaigner, and with him, a man that uh, has also been around the block, Jonti Okahiso Rapulana, as he is known. The one thing that we did learn from the first half of the match is pace off the ball is, is a good ingredient to have, a good tool to have in your toolbox, and it's going to be interesting to see how Western Province use their bowling lineup to put the Tuskers under immediate pressure. Michael Erlang opened the bowling from a Tuskers point of view, so we had spin up front, change in tactics from a Western Province perspective. Duran Hendricks, left arm seamer, going to Kahiso Rapulana. With me in commentary, Tarek Ibrahim, and we'll get his thoughts on the first half shortly. But it is Hendricks who's on the pads and just whipped away. But there is protection, so the, uh, the boundary runners, just to remind you, if you're new to the T20 format, you allowed two players outside the inner circle, inside the six over, which is also, or six over period, which is also known as the power play period. And those two feel this currently, uh, they've got a, a, a deep third man, more sort of a, a backward point operating towards that third man boundary. And then they have a sweeper on, uh, on the leg side boundary as well. So it's going to be interesting as you see how they use the tactics to Cameron Delport, very explosive at the top of the order. He'll be a key ingredient. If the Tuskers have any hope of getting over the line, he'll need a good start. Hendricks right on the money. So for Delport, they have that backward point, and then they also have the man on the, on the leg side boundary. Tariq, we were treated to brilliant stroke play, exquisite stroke play by Edward Moore and, and Wayne Parnell, who came in at, at number three with the loss of Tony De Zorzi up front, and they really propelled Western Province to the score of 208 for six. Your, just shortly, your summary of that first half and what the Tuskers will need to do right in order to get over the line. Yeah, I think... Um WSB Western Province, they summed up the pitch very, very quickly um, between uh, Eddie Moore and Tony De Zorzi. They summed up the pitch very, very early. They noticed that as soon as Erlang bowled, there was, uh, you know, there was something in it there for the slower bowler. And as soon as uh, the pace of Keith Dudgeon came on, no lateral movement at all, very up and down. You can trust the bounce, you can play your shots. And that's exactly what Eddie Moore and... Uh, also, Wayne Bonal did when he came to the creases. They just backed their abilities, they backed their, their stroke play. And that's what got them the boundaries. There was no sort of wild flashes to try and create something out of absolutely nothing. It was um, simple cricket shots. And that is perhaps, I think, what the AT Tuskers need to do as well. Yes, perhaps the conditions could change a little bit with uh, the sun being on the pitch for a little bit longer. Um, and a bit more experience in the uh, WSB Western Province bowling lineup. The Tuskers, they do need a strong start. And this combination of Dalport and Rapulana is exactly what they need at the top of the order. One of them have got to, has got to bat through. It's again, good, good length. The, the, the experience is showing right away. Buren Hendricks, he knows this pitch. He knows... These conditions, knows what, how to execute his uh, skill set. And the immediate similarity for me, if, if, if you look at the way we set up, no slip, yep. no gully. There's a, a third man in the inner ring and, and a fine leg. But same sort of approach. We saw a, a slip in the first over of the province batting effort. Erlang was bowling and he, he had a slip for only the one over. We didn't see it again. Hendricks, well, that's down the leg side. Uh, Naughty, 
second one that he's uh, just he's tried too much with. So that will uh, tick the score onto four. So one delivery to complete the first over. The Tuskers, well, they have a, they have a couple of mountains to climb. Uh, I, I guess the, the first key will be to get yourself into a strong position in the power play. You'll need to produce runs. If you don't use the power play to good effect, it's going to be pretty di difficult to chase from there. And then wickets, wickets in hand. That old saying, it uh, sounds like a broken record. We always talk about it, but, but you can't chase a game if you're three down or four down inside the power play. I think this is probably an area of, of the game the Tuskers that really struggled with, is with uh, bat in hand. Talpo, Rapolana, you know, they, they've got the experience. They, they are entrusted to, to get them off to a good start. And unfortunately, we just look at uh, how things have gone this season for the two of them. Dalpo's highest has only been 39. He hasn't been able to get across uh, the uh, half century mark. And for Rapolana, he's only been able to get uh, as high as 19. So that just shows that the, the Tuskers are not getting a fast start. Or a solid enough start from uh, the opening pair. There's no real foundation for the rest of the batters to work with. I think this is the importance of uh, op the opening pair is that they set the tone for the rest of the of, uh, of the team. We saw in the first innings, Dzorzi and Moore setting the foundation. I think they got up to uh, uh, 40 oh. runs in four overs, which set that foundation for. Uh, was was beating Western Province, and and it's just allowed Parnell to come in at number three and pretty much play the way that he played. You talk about Parnell, and, and, and again, what a what a position to be in. You've got Hendricks from the one side, you've got Parnell from the other, both international bowlers coming at you, trying to chase a two hundred and nine score. They're not going to give you much. They, it's, it's, it, that they just have too much. They know this these conditions. They know the pitch. They know uh, the opposition. That's again down the leg side. Hendrick struggled slightly with it, with a couple that went wayward, and, and Bonnell maybe also just uh, pushing that one too far across. So it's a, a, a wide, and, and Extra's doing uh, pretty nicely uh, at the top <laughs> of the order. But seven without the loss. I, I guess my next question is going to lead into the power game because that we saw in abundance from a from a Western Province perspective. The man on strike. It needs no introduction from a power game perspective, but who's going to back him? There's that first shot in anger from Delport over the top, straight hit and over the fence. That's a couple of bounces, the first boundary on the board for the Tuskers. That's nice and up there for Cameron Delport. She maintains his shape so beautifully with a shot. It's full and all he needs to do is just hit through the line. Bit of a pitching wedge, kind of gets a, a bit of backspin on the ball when it lands, but gets it to the boundary. You can see he definitely didn't want to uh, try and overhit it. I'm pretty sure that uh, he must have taken some notes uh, watching Eddie Moore do what he did. Was that, that's essentially what the Eddie Moore innings was. It wasn't overhitting the ball, it was just standard stroke play shots, trusting in your timing. Better length from Parnell, but uh, the single will be taken by Delport. I was, I was after that shot from uh, from Delport. I was I was taking a, a look at Carl Verena and his body language and what he was signalling, and it was very evident. He just said, "Just spread out, give yourself the maximum space, so that we just cut off the boundaries. We, the, the, the singles singles won't win the Tuskers this game, so we're happy to to sort of move around the circle and." and uh, to the maximum distance. We don't want to give runs away, but we're not too worried. As Rapulana says, Delport, I can also play the power game. And he goes over the top and he helps himself to a first boundary. So that takes him on to five. I think consistency is the one thing that uh, Ponal has uh, struggled with. I mean, come back uh, into this uh, WSB Western Province side. Just serves this one up beautifully outside the off stump, allows Rapolana to free the arms. It's beautiful timing to get it over the top. But uh, back to your point, Johan, of you know, who's going to back up the power game of uh, Dalport? 
Rapulana oh, lovely. is uh, answering you. Yeah, absolutely. Rapulana has helped himself to back-to-back -back boundaries. And it, I mean, we all know what that does. Just from a confidence perspective, you're facing an international bowler, class act. Uh, that is intimidating enough. Rapulana can play. There's no doubt about that. But taking two, two fours, they're just going to settle the nerves. You, you don't want to get behind the eight ball especially in that power play. So they've, yeah. they've put together 20, they need to go at just over 10 to the over at this stage, all intact, the ball that's uh, still left in the second over. Changing angle from Bonnell. Just nudges this towards the, the third man that's inside the inner ring. So we've negotiated two overs, the Tuskers reply is on course, they 20 without loss in pursuit of 209. Rapulana has nine, Delport has eight. A good start and a steady start from the AT uh, Tuskers. And again, pretty much as we saw in the uh, WSB Western Province innings, chanceless. They kept up with the run rate and they've played simple cricket shots. They've played classic cricket shots. It hasn't been anything in anger thus far or anything uh, inventive that they've had to force themselves uh, to do because they're under a bit of pressure. Yes, they only managed to get four runs from the first over. But then Rapulana kind of identified that Ponal has been a bit inconsistent with ball throughout the season and has carried on into this game. So he's uh, taken a liking to Ponal as Hendricks continues from the wine begin. Oh, it's uh, up and over from Delport. Has it got enough legs? Well, you're talking about uh, a pitching wedge. That was the sand wedge out. Straight down, no roll, nothing. Dalport would have wanted more. He only, only gets a single for his for his effort. Probably naughty that they did not run two. Anticipated that it would go to the fence. So here's the first consistency in the bowling department. Erlang's hand was forced up front. He had to do multiple changes. He used six bowlers inside the first ten overs. Here we've got Hendricks going into his uh, second consecutive over. And it's seam up front from uh, Western Province. This one will be off the thigh pad. Yeah, I guess when you're a captain like uh, Carl Verena and you've got you know, international caliber players like Bjorn Hendricks and Wayne Van Nall, who you can turn to immediately to uh, get your bowling innings underway, it would be hard to try and get the ball away from him. I mean, despite you know, Van Nall conceding 16 overs, or at least 16 runs in his first over, one still feels as though it's going to be hard to get the ball away from him. Um, we know that uh, we know that Calvarain is, is is not afraid to to change tactics. So we could you know, see uh, Spin come on next over. We could see Tiwekaya Nabe perhaps from the other side. It all depends on on how uh, Parnell is feeling. Because we remember when he was batting, he kind of signaled something to uh, the change room. Just before he, that, that very next ball, he went out after making that signal. So perhaps not uh, feeling 100% at the moment is going well. Yes, uh, again, protection there. Good field placing. It leads to only a single. So Hendricks is, is doing nicely. It's exactly what the doctor ordered. Having only conceded six from the first 10 deliveries that he's bowled, he'll, he'll want a strong finish. Rapulana on nine, Delport on 10. Again, you put on that captaincy hat and you look around the field and you've got so many options, and not only options, but international options. We you know how to perform at the highest level, under the biggest pressure, on the biggest stage. Advances, that's a lovely shot again over the top. More intent shown by Rapulana, helps himself to another boundary. That's what the Tuskers need. These first six overs will be key. Must, must get a good start. And more than a good start. They need a, a, a good start with interest. Yeah, Chanti Rapulana deciding on this occasion. He's going to come down the track to uh, Hendricks and not just allow him to bowl at him. Gets uh, himself out onto the leg side. He hates the width for himself. And just slaps it over cover to get the ball to the boundary and continue his... Uh, fast start to this innings. Good reply by Hendricks. 
sort of had Rapolano jumping around, but still uh, enough contact to, to call through Delport. End of another over, it's 28 without the loss of wickets. AET Tuskers in pursuit of 209. Rapolano 14, Delport 10. So does Parnell get a second over? The answer is no. It's an immediate change. Here we see it immediately from uh, skipper Carl Verena turning to uh, left arm spinner. His uh, namesake Carl Simmons is uh, into the tack. We know that uh, Simmons has done really, really well in uh, all formats for WSB Western Province this season. So high on confidence is Carl Simmons. And uh, for the captain to give you the ball before the likes of uh, George Linder must mean that there is uh, plenty of trust in, in his ability. And you just look at Simmons and he's just moving his long off more, more round because Rapolano's boundaries, that's where, exactly where he's gone. And, well, on cue, <laughs> straight to the fielder. So, very aware. I, I guess, again, you're working in partnership with your captain, but, but just observing what's happening around you and the way that the, the shot making is taking place. Where's the strengths? Where's the possible weaknesses? And, and Rapolano has favoured that area from the onset. So, Simmons, good positioning, only concedes the single, could have been a, a boundary. This battle, I think, will be key. I'm looking forward to the Simmons versus Delport. Too much on the pads. Now, the key there for Carl Simmons is definitely the length in which he bowled that one, darted it in uh, onto the legs of uh, Delport, not giving him a chance to free the arms. Of course, still in the power play, so the two fielders out when uh, Delport's on strike is long on and a deep square. And you can understand the thinking behind it because the, the shorter boundary with Delport facing off uh, well, towards his offside will be exactly that. He'll have a, a shorter boundary, he'll eye it. So any width that's on offer, he'll, he'll definitely take it on. And, and at this stage, it's a vacant area. So who's, who's going to take the chance? Is it going to come from the Delport bat at this stage? No, he just brought this one into uh, the cover region. He knows that his wicket will be key as well. It'll take some time just to adjust, find the speed of the surface, and then when he, just, when he feels that the time is right, he'll, he'll need to be the aggressor. Can't allow Simmons to settle. Now, introduces the reverse sweep. No! It's the wicket. It's the wicket they didn't need to lose. Credit to Carl Simmons. He's forced the shot in error. Dalport's execution let him down. And the first wicket down for the Tuskers at 31 for 1. Delport walks back for 11. Cameron Delport probably eyeing that shorter boundary on his offside. Knowing that it will take a big hit to try and clear the uh, leg side boundary. Probably the first time ever that I've seen Cameron Delport attempt a, a reverse sweep. And uh, Carl Simmons, as he did with the very first ball to Delport, darts this one in. It's a little bit flatter. And a bit more speed on it and hits him on the full in front of uh, what would traditionally be his leg stump. Uh, umpire having no problem in raising the finger, so Tuskers lose their first. Yeah, I must just say that looked uh, as adjacent as, as what you could want to see it from a bowling perspective. Don't think it was the most difficult one. Oh, what's happening here? change in mind it seems uh, from uh, the Tuskers Sletchwa being uh, called back and seems to me as though it's Kukumur, uh, Kukumur that has been sent so going for going for the power game are the AT Tuskers how often do you see that Johanna that's when virtually uh, at the at the crease already and being called back because uh, the coaching staff have had a change in mind. Well, we did that a lot of in, in club cricket in, in Natal. <laughs> uh, we, I must say, there was uh, the, the captain overruled on a, on a number of occasions in the club system there in Newcastle where I played, but everyone was padded up simultaneously, so <laughs> <laughs> trying to jump the queue. But no, I must say, I haven't seen that before. It's absolutely, change in mind, and Tian Kukumur has been preferred, and uh, 
just looking at the enormity of the task, 209, and they're probably just saying Delport, like for like, but Kukumuri, you've got to take it on. Yeah, it does, um, does Kyle Simmons do the same thing with, uh, with Kukumuri, continue to dart it, so that first ball to him had a bit more flight in it, so Kukumuri able to just work it down to uh, long on to pick up the single. But an excellent over that was from uh, Kyle Simmons, conceding just for being up the uh, crucial wicket of Cameron Delport as well. And that's exactly what uh, Kyle Verena would have wanted from him after Wayne Pondal conceding that 16 in his first over from the Calvin Grove end. Yeah, 100%. I, I, you have to give Kyle Verena the, the, the credit, the, the captaincy credit. He, he, he saw the, the opportunity, introduced spin, having gone seam for the first three overs and an immediate reward and uh, we also have uh, Nabe join the attack now so also a lot of variation inside the first uh, inside the power play Rapulana has looked good he's looked promising 16 Kukumur new to the crease single of the only delivery that he's faced but that that task is becoming a lot more da daunting as we go and you can't afford overs that go for five and six Mtukwaya Nabe, 32 for one, great position to bowl at, run rate required already over 11. Kukumur will get the single. Inside half of the bat from uh, Kukumur. And uh, having bowled on the surface, he would actually know that uh, you know, the likes of Mtukwaya and Nabe would be pretty dangerous on the this, uh, this surface. Does certainly suit the, uh, the slower bowler and Tiwakai and Abe, not as uh, pacey as a Ponal and, uh, and a Hendrix. So he's going to end up relying on his uh, variations. Well, a lot of similarities between, I, I, I guess, I don't want to compare him to Tian Kukumur, but I, th I think they fulfill a, a similar role and, and a containing role now, and a, a couple of tight overs will just lead to more pressure. And, Rapulana and, and Kukumur will, will have to take it on at some stage. 176 more required. Power play also half, halfway through, more than halfway through. Uh, shot in anger. It's a weak. It flies over the top of the, the third man. It's inside the fence. You'll see Verena acknowledge the effort from Nabe exactly where he wanted him to be. That's just, that's just part of the T20 format and the T20 game. You, you're going to get some fly edges. It's going to happen. Nothing you can do about that. Nabi did his job perfectly. Execution was there. The luck was on the Tusker side and on Rapulana's side. He goes to 20. Uh, does does Nabi continue to do what he's been doing and just bowling that same line? Well, it goes shorter this time. and There is a, a fielder that, that, that's uh, positioned. So I, I guess Rapulana will say he's pretty grateful he didn't middle that. Otherwise, it could have been down the throat of, of, of the fielder. Nabi's doing an excellent, excellent job. He's conceded six, four lucky runs. But you can see the pressure building between the, what Rapulana is trying to do now and, and also just the scoreboard. That scoreboard pressure having lost Delport. He needs to take over the aggressor role. Kukumur will add, need to add, but he'll need to settle quickly. This one is angled in again towards the, the legs. Now, this is good work from Tiwe Kayanabe, backing up the effort of uh, Carl Simmons. I mean, just uh, conceded the six runs of five balls in this over. He's got to finish off this over strongly. And that would be back-to-back -back overs where WSB Western Province are just turning that screw and tightening it even more on the Tuskers. And we're speaking of that, and it's only five overs into the inning. A lovely finish to the Nabe over. Galvarena will applaud this effort, having only gone for seven, of which uh, there was a boundary in there as well. And, and, and to your point, I, I guess that's where the task has also fell slightly short, is the support between the, the, the bowling uh, from, from both ends. The, there was a sequence of two overs that I can remember between Delport and Kukumur, where the, where the two overs spell went for ten. Yeah, Western Province are just more accurate and, and they're conceding less, so they're building up the pressure where the Tuskers failed to do that for a sustained period. Yeah, it's, uh, it's that old adage where, you know, you're not only batting in partnerships, but you're bowling in partnerships as well. And, um, you know, Buren Hendricks started the innings off, 
conceding just four runs in his uh, first over. Ponal came on from Calvin Grove and that went for 16. And you thought, right, the 80 Tuskers are going to start letting loose. And very next over from Buren Hendricks only went for seven. So it just shows you that the bowlers of uh, WSB Western Province are able to back each other up. No surprise to see that uh, Simmons is getting a, a second over, having picked up the valuable wicket of Cameron Dalport in his previous over. 39 for one. We spoke about the, the, the availability, especially on the leg side, where, we, where we're playing towards now. There, there's definitely a, a good opportunity to convert ones into twos. What I like about Carl Verena is he's acted immediately. He's brought a man across from the, from the, the cover side towards the leg side to try and stop that opportunity. Simmons will employ the same length and he'll, he'll attack the same channel. And I'll, I'll, again, they'll take singles all day long. Last over of the power play and then the fielding restrictions will relax as well. So they've protected well. They, they've, they've, they've executed their they skill set. 42 for one. Carl Verena would have taken that day in and day out. Yeah, I think any captain would have taken uh, this start and this power play from uh, WSB Western Province. Can convert this into it's slightly wide of the field, so it's uh, Rapulana just getting a, a, another double for the Tuskers. Kukumu saw that as well. Yeah, and that's that big pockets that we were yes. speaking about in the first innings, uh, hitting towards the north stand and the, the Oaks. It's a very long hit out there as Rapulana smashes this one though through the gap. Nobody uh, at deep cover. And picks up the boundary. And he just missed his mark there, Tariq. Mm. Gave him the opportunity to free the arms. Needed no second invitation. It's just it's wide enough. And it's on a good length for Rapulana. There's uh, only one back you know, on the offside for him. And that's a sort of squarish long on. So anything through the covers will race away. First one and he's really missed his mark. There's a, a, a half a hand on, on that ball, but he'll convert that into two. And the Tuskers will go to 50 inside the power play. Rapulana is nice and busy. 29 from uh, 19 deliveries now. Kukumur, a runner ball, 6. 50 for, for one. Uh, 50 for one with one ball remaining in the power play. No, it's a steady start from the AET Tuskers. Uh, and in, in the context of the game, yes, they might still be behind the eight ball a bit. But this is a good start that uh, Rapulana has gotten up to 30 of uh, 20 at the end of, uh, of the power play. Perhaps this is that type of innings that Rapulana needs just to get his confidence up a little bit. You know, he struggled uh, a bit this season. But this is good to see that he's uh, wanting to take the fight to the uh, Western Province bowlers. So that leaves the equation 84 balls to get 158 more runs. Buren Hendricks, two overs for 11. Wayne Bonnell's only over, went for 16. Simmons, two overs, one for 16. He's picked up the only wicket, that of Cameron Dalport. And uh, Nabe, he's only over, cost seven. And he'll get uh, his second opportunity in Tequaya, in Tequaya Nabe. Rapulana will punch, but uh, won't beat the inner field. That required run rate just continues to, to press up slightly. Ball by ball, 11.3. That's where we're standing at the moment. The rate achieved at 8.5. Wickets in hand will be uh, very important for the Tuskers' ambition to, to get themselves close or get themselves a possible win. And like you said earlier, Tariq, someone will have to play through the innings and the stage, Rapulana is that man. Kukumur, when does he decide to go? The answer is now. It's Verena chasing, Verena chasing. He misses it. Not something you see too often. Carl Verena normally is safe as houses. I didn't seem comfortable underneath that one at all, Johan. Just uh, running after it initially, I thought perhaps he was going to leave it. Didn't uh, seem as though he was too committed. It's 
not really there for that pull shot gets big on him you just see the way that he's running it just doesn't seem like he's gonna get there and uh, just looking around at the at the trees there's a bit of a wind about and we know inside world sports betting newlands the wind does tend to swirl so as soon as the ball goes up it just makes life a little bit more interesting whether you've got gloves on or not yeah, very un Carl Verena like, but he's also only human, but he, he covered the distance. That was not the problem. He just just lost the angle at the end. And he'll be talking to himself. He's a, he's a perfectionist. He'll be, he'll be leading, but he'll be shaking that head, and he'll be uh, very frustrated with himself and annoyed with himself. I don't think he's going to be the only one speaking <laughs> to himself. I think there's quite a few of the teammates that's... Uh, Going to remind him probably for the rest of the season about uh, about that drop catch. Well, it's nice for uh, Nabe to have one on the on the captain. <laughs> it does get you a front row seat in the bus, or uh, where, where you can use that to your advantage, even late in the season. But uh, Carl Verena, he would have wanted to take, and that uh, he would have been expected to to take that one. Nevertheless, a lifeline for Kukumur. Can he make the most of it? We saw what Parnell did. He was also dropped early and converted that into a 46. So Kukumur can play with a, a, a bit more freedom and say, well, okay, maybe it's my day. Again, another good over from Tiweka and Nabe. Just needs to uh, finish us off. The slow <laughs> ball, very well executed by Nabe. Saw him coming. He's got a, a big smile on his face. He, he knows he's won that battle yeah. with uh, John Tirapulana. He's won that. Uh, he's won that one fair and square. There's a massive slower ball wide on, outside uh, the off stump and just crept in inside that uh, guiding line that the uh, umpires use. I like what you've said there. The guiding line. And Lapulana gave himself some room, moved towards the leg side, so the, the bowler executed perfectly. Well, well bowled, uh, Mr. Nabe. Okay, so you've got Simmons out of the way and into George Linder. So they, they're extremely blessed in this department. They've got so much talent, talent in abundance, and so many options for, for Verena to call upon. And here comes another one. 57 for one, seven overs gone. Target 209, Rapulana on 32 from 23 balls. Kukumut from 10, waiting for him to cut loose. Kukumut gets some width, but he'll, uh, he won't find the gap though. Rapulana is very quick and he's pushing his man through and his partner through for two. That's, that's a great example of converting a, a one into a two. Just hard running from Rapulana. He earned Kukumur that, that uh, two. Awareness, good placement by, by Kukumur, but you still have to convert that. And that was very well done by, by the combination of Rapulana and Kukumur. Linda will be a handful. This one worked onto the leg side for one. Tariq, you just look at it. Kukumur has been, he's been subdued. He's been, he's been kept in his cage. 11 balls, 13 runs. You just, you just have the feeling that the, the, the battle's going to be here. It's, it's, it has to be here. They've got to take Linda on. Even being a seasoned campaigner and a man that... Uh, has all the tricks in the book. Rapulana just gives himself some space and then maneuvers this one into the gap. They're thinking about two, but well fielded. it. Yeah, one certainly feels as though the way that the, the game is sitting at the moment and the way the batters are going about their business, picking up ones and twos, well, I suppose betting Western Province are very much okay with this. Uh, this is uh, p playing perfectly into their hands, you know, minimizing the boundary count just forces that uh, rate required to start to skyrocket. And when, uh, when that pressure comes on, that scoreboard pressure of you, you know, you having to start your innings at 10, now all of a sudden you've got to go at 13, 14 runs and over. That's when the mistakes creep in from the batting side and that's when the bowling side um, can take advantage of it. And perhaps one feels as though with the ball just getting moved around for singles. Captain uh, Calvarain and Cole 
are very happy to uh, give the 80 Tuskers as many singles as they want. You know, I, I, at the end of the day, you, you, can, you can say that in T20 cricket, I, you can chase a, a 15 or two or three 15 a run overs to, to win a game. But to do it consistently for, for 11 or 12 overs, that, that takes some doing. And that's exactly where we're moving towards. We're already at almost two runs a ball from this point on. And uh, yes, there's wickets in hand, but someone needs to take that, that, that role and that aggressive role and take the fight to, to Western Province. And you just feel it on this man's shoulders. He's at a lifeline. He's not there yet. Straight to the, the fielder. So good execution, good strategy by, by captain and bowler George Linders. First over, also only going for six. It's 63 for one. Look at that required run rate. It's jumping up quickly. Before the start of the over, it was 11.3. 12.2, six balls later. Now that just shows you what happens when you're unable to uh, pick up the boundary in, uh, in an over. All of a sudden, the run rate creeps up on you. And uh, as well by, by polling uh, the slower bowlers from, from both ends. World Sports Betting Western Province are getting through the overs a lot quicker as well. By the time uh, the Tuskers look up, 12, 13 overs would be done already and they're needing to go at 14 runs and over. And speaking of uh, slower bowlers, the uh, second debutant for uh, World Sports Betting Western Province have been, has been thrown the ball, the uh, national under-19 captain, Juan James. Starts well. Now, what an opportunity this whole system, Cricket South Africa's domestic system, presents the, the younger generation. Another right. product that, that comes through these ranks and here's the, here's the platform for him to, to, to write his own chapters of, of a hopefully a promising and fruitful career. What I like uh, from Skip over Reina is that he's, he's turned to, to the youngster, he's given him the ball, he's an off spinner. So, giving him the, the hitting him bowl at least from the Weinberg end, so big boundary towards the Oaks. Sefrapulana wants to take him on with the spin, he's got to hit it you know, quite far to uh, sort of clear the boundary as this one comes straight down the ground. Good work in the deep by Mtiwekaya Nabe to uh, stop that boundary. Fantastic. From uh, the tall seamer. Yeah, needs a high five there. It's a baby five, but needed a high five. Just speaking to that, so James has got uh, a big leg side to work with. So if uh, the Tuskers are wanting to take him on, they've got to go against the grain and against the turn to try and hit him towards the railway stand. Uh, this one is also. No, it's not enough on it. And I guess that's, that's the immediate difference from the way that Edward Moore... I'm ready to, I'm, I will take Tony Desorsi out, mm. out of this equation because he lost his wicket at 14. So the way Parnell and Moore manipulated the field and the way that they found the boundaries at regular intervals, that's a, a glaring difference. And talking about, there comes the shot in anger. There's a man under it. Wicket time. And it is John James. What a dream start for him. First over strikes and he gets Kukumur and you felt it, it had to happen. Kukumur had to cut loose. He was, he, he was uh, contained, well contained by, by Western Province. Finally the shot comes. He was dropped first time around. Verena will feel better about life because he put him down but now finally they do get the wicket and it is John James. What a, a day to remember for the young man. Now that's what pressure does, Johan. That's the pressure from the Nabe over. The pressure from the Linda over. You know, not getting... Uh, the ball to the boundary, not scoring any quick runs. So Kukumur was picked back all the time, decides he's going to go after the debutant. John James holds his nerve, forces uh, Kukumur to hit against the grain, which he tries to do, gets underneath it. And it's good work in the deep from the uh, substitute fielder, Abdullah Bayumi, to uh, close the, uh, the angle down nicely, then steady himself to take the catch uh, at Cow Corner. Enter Michael Adlonk, captain of uh, the Tuskers outfit. He also opened the bowling season campaigner. We'll never use the word veteran because, uh, as I say, absolutely seasoned campaigner. Uh, interesting, higher score of 60 scored against the same opposition, Western Province. Did a good job, I thought, with ball in hand. Now there's a big responsibility with the bat, massive responsibility. They've lost two power hitters. 
Lapulano as well set 38 from 28, but he'll need to probably also up the tempo. He'll feel the pressure because losing partners, someone will someone will need to stand tall and, and, and see if they can take the fight back to Western Province. But this is a great confidence boost for boost for a man that that's new to to this format or new to this environment. Oh, brilliant fielding, brilliant fielding, and that's what you want your fielders to back up what you've done and all the pressure that you've built. Partnership then uh, was. 37 runs, 68 for two. It's advantage Western Province, nine overs gone. Rapulana has 38, Erlang has to get off the mark. John James has a wicket. Oh, this is really good stuff from uh, World Sports Betting Western Province. That confidence I was speaking about uh, in their batting innings, just being rolled over into, into their, their bowling display. And when you've got uh, the backing of your fielders as well, uh, as a bowler, you just see your fielders Train themselves around on the field. We saw Mtiwekai and Ave saving that boundary in the last ball of the over as well. One of the fielders uh, couldn't quite see who it was, throwing himself uh, to save runs. So, as a bowler, when you know you're bowling and the uh, the fielders are willing to put their bodies on the line to save as many runs as they can, that gives you the extra confidence to just know that you can back, you know, whatever it is that you need to do and get that uh, wicket for the team. We saw Seam up front, Hendricks and Parnell putting three overs together and from there, uh, Nabe also coming, with, with, coming in with his medium paces and now it's the, the spin of Simmons, Linda, James operating in tandem. More pressure being applied as Erlang leaves his crease, he'll get off the mark with the single. Well, and then there's a misfield and uh, this time allowed to, to get one extra. Linda won't be too impressed. That bowling figures, uh, it's the one thing a bowler hates, is <laughs> conceding a run that he wasn't supposed to concede or a wicket that he was supposed to get in a drop catch. No one does that on purpose, of course, but bowlers hate that. As keepers hate buyers. <laughs> Slightly wider. Yeah, and I guess those sort of misfields is all circumstantial. If uh, if it had been a tighter game, you know, you would probably been a bit more animated from the bowler, especially and uh, the captain Calvarain. Um, this time though, they've got a few extra runs to play with, um, and where you might have lost your cool, you kind of just uh, sweep that one under the mat and, and forgive him quickly. Oh, well bowled, very well bowled, darted in towards the, the pads and Rapulana had no answer there, very difficult to get that away. Where's his boundary scoring shot going to come from? 39 from 30. Opened the batting with Cameron Delport. Delport back in the pavilion for 11, Kukumur back for 15. Adelang on 3, Rapulana 39. He'll go straight and... They'll think about two, but not this time around. Feel, feel they will cut it off quite easily. It's just wonderful to see George Linda apply his trade and the experience. And I'm sure John James will feed off this. He'll have a, a close look at what George Linda is doing. And he would have learned a lot from him in the nets as well. And working with a, a man that's got so much experience. But they're just on top of the Tuskers. And they're giving very few freebies away. Slightly shorter, but again, only a single. That's not what the Tuskers want. Another fruitful, not from a wicket's perspective, but from a run rate perspective, Linda would have taken two overs for 12, going at six to the over when the required rate is constantly pushing up. We're now at 13.5. There the bowling figures. Started off with Bjorn and Hendricks. So seam from both ends. Wayne Parnell. He's one over, cost 16. Let's see if we'll... We have to wait uh, if, if we'll see him back into the attack at some point during the course of today. But Hendricks has done a, a good job. And then the maintaining job from Simmons, Narby, Linda, now John James. He's got his tail up. In just a few hours' time as well, our uh, Proteus women, they start uh, their campaign and their series, uh, their bilateral series against uh, Sri Lanka. Absolutely. And uh, today is... Uh, the start of that series, they take on a Sri Lanka game, gets going at 6 o'clock. Coming to you live from uh, Willemore Park in uh, Bononi. So, Waza Nawe, and let's uh, show up for our team. 
uh, interesting to see earlier on Australia completely dominating Bangladesh in uh, the one-day international series. Another comfortable win. Bangladesh in the three one-day international matches. They did not score more than 100 once. So a comfortable series victory for Australia there. And now they turn their attention to the T20 format. England and New Zealand involved in, in, a, in a, a, a good contested series. In the meantime, John James says, what's this all about professional <laughs> franchise cricket? I, I, this, is, this is easy pickings. Another wicket, but Erlang, well, you can't really blame him. It's, it's, it's a bridge too far. You need to go from the start. And we spoke about three down in a power play. We've, we've, we've gone past the power play, but 76 for three. Erlang gone for five and more pressure on the Tuskers. Another wicket to John James, two for seven from almost, uh, he's completed two overs. Uh, it's all Western Province and it's all going wrong for, for the Tuskers, unfortunately. Uh, look, you're at the halfway stage of your innings and you've, uh, you're chasing 209 for victory. Only managing to get 70, uh, 76 in the first half. So just compounds that uh, pressure you're already on having to start off uh, on, on, strong, on a strong footing. And unfortunately for Rapulana, there's, there's nobody staying there with him and not only is there nobody staying there with him he's been uh, starved of the strike Every, the, the other batters have come in and they've uh, sort of hogged the strike for a little bit and uh, Rapulana who has uh, shown that he was he wants to take the fight to uh, world sports betting western province he's uh, been unable to so when he does eventually get to the crease to face a ball what's going to go through his head knowing if he looks up at the board that they've got to go at 14.3 to the over from here on out. So it's all these sort of uh, situations and, and, and mind games that are that are going up against uh, the, the AET Tuskers. Alindile Mthletwa to join uh, Kahiso Rapulana. And out of the 76, again, he scored more than half of the runs. And uh, we passed the halfway mark of the innings. So really, to your point, and just supporting what you've said, Kletua off the mark. Jean James loving life. This is, uh, this is the way you start your career. So here we get a chance to see what Rapulana is going to do. He's uh, only going to be able to get one delivery from James. Lovely. Over the top. Inside out. Will it have enough legs? Oh, yeah. yeah it does. It does. It touched the rope. It was... Uh, a great effort on the, on the boundary, but it did touch the ropes of Rapulana. Lovely shot. One of the more difficult uh, shots to play in cricket, that inside out over the top. But Rapulana goes to 45, and again playing a lone hand for the Tuskers at this stage. As we uh, take a look at that wicket once again, floated up there from Ron James, and I think he's found the perfect length to bowl at the left-handers uh, on this deck. It's not too full for them to get underneath it, and it's not too short as well for them to rock back. So they've got to try and play it off this, uh, this, this uncomfortable length. And uh, on both occasions, we've seen both left-handers, Kukumur and Erlang, looking for that same slog sweep shot. Kukumur made contact, couldn't clear the boundary. Erlang completely misses it and gets uh, his middle stomped up back. You, know, you just look at how well the bowlers have supported one another in this province lineup. Simmons, two overs, one for 16. Narby, two overs for 13. Linda, two overs for 12. James, two overs, two for 12. So they've, they've really all done a job on the Tuskers. And very few bad deliveries that's been, uh, that's been there for, for the picking. Mkletchwa will go on to three. Rapulana on 45. But... Uh, I, uh, it's going to be such a difficult one, and as much as you want to give Rapulana a strike, it, it will have to go from both ends. Run rate up at 14.3. It, it's going to take a superhuman effort for, for one person to, to maintain that throughout the course of the rest of, of, of this fixture. But they'll learn out of this as well. There's a lot of youngsters in this Tuskers lineup, so use the, use the opportunity to, to measure yourself against some of the finest in the country. And on the international stage, and, and use that to, to, to building, or putting building blocks in place to, to uh, you, uh, the way you approach this sort of target the next time you face it. Rapulana is not going to give up the fight, and he'll, he could get two if they're uh, quick about it. He'll have to stretch the legs, but Mkletra has done very nicely and has helped Rapulana move on to 47. 
Yeah, and I also think the one thing that we need to uh, be cognizant of is that um, the Tuskers, they don't have any home games. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and your home ground is such a, such a sacred ground for you because those are, those are five games where you can effectively try and bank on five victories. But for the 80 Tuskers in this competition, they don't have that. They're going to be on the road for every single one of, of their matches. So it makes it a bit tougher. Although on the other end, it could help with the team camaraderie and, and getting everybody together. And when you are in this sort of tough situations, you know, you can come together nicely to get yourself out of it. But it's a tough hand to be dealt when you are playing Division One cricket for, for, for your, effectively your first season, having just been promoted from uh, Division Two. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. Very good point. Also, I mean, the golfers will tell you there's no such thing as an ugly golf course. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and it's, it's, it's a magical place to play cricket. I've had the, the privilege of, of, of walking out to bat at the Maritzburg Oval, and it's, it's a special place. So for, for these guys missing out, yes, it's, it is what it is, but uh, it gives them an opportunity to build towards something bigger and long-term future in mind. This is where it gets interesting, Johan. A change of ends for uh, Carl Simmons. We saw him operating from the uh, Calvin Grove end and now switching to the Weinberg end, which would mean that for these uh, two right-hand batters, with a turn will be to the shorter, the shorter boundary in the railway side. I would like to know what John James is thinking. <laughs> <laughs> And that we've seen a lot of that as well, and I guess again, just the enormity of the of, of the task at hand, and then you find the fielders when you get a, an opportunity to score. It's been it's been the story for the Tuskers, unfortunately. But Simmons, this one is slightly shorter, but again, can't find the rope. I'm just going back to John James, two overs, two for twelve, and whipped out of the attack, and looking at your captain going. Um, I'm not injured. I <laughs> <laughs> just taken two wickets. Yeah. Maybe just walk past Calvary and say, I just want to tell you, I'm still match fit. <laughs> <laughs> Rapulana, last movement in the crease. Mm. Now he's done that pretty much from, uh, from ball one as uh, Rapulana is uh, trying to use his feet, be it walking away from... Uh, uh, the stumps are coming down the track. Well, the summit looks more promising for a two, but uh, excellent cutting off. That's so quick around the ground, limiting that potential two to one. 90 for three, 119 more required, and well, that rate required is pretty nasty. at 16.1 currently. been a, a just a, a total dominant performance in all departments but let's give credit to Kahiso Rapulana with everything happening around him he's helped himself to a 50 a well-deserved 50 and again good cricketing shots 50 from 37 staffed off the strike saw three of his partners come and go but he's kept his cool and he's helped himself to an individual milestone and if nothing else that will give him a, a lot of confidence moving forward well done Kahiso Rapulana they try in the meantime says let's add to the celebrations and he'll cut loose and help himself to four one of the more expensive overs that we've seen in this innings i think that's also the first boundary that we've seen in quite a while but that, just to get on to what you were saying uh johan kakiso rapulana definitely full value for his uh, half century and uh, his runs is uh, and still remains more than half of the total of the 80 tuskers so he is uh Perhaps while his uh, CSA T20 Challenge season thus far hasn't been great, he's come here to uh, WSB Newlands and decided that today is the day where he's going to find his form and he's done just that. An excellent half century from uh, Rapulana. And 
with uh, seven overs to go, he could kick on. In the meantime, Nabe returns to the batting attack. Two overs for 13, so halfway through his spell. Tiwekaya Nabe. Papulana 15, Mthechwa 11. So 113 runs required, 112 runs required, or 41 deliveries. So it will be interesting to see uh, how quickly Nabe adapts to bowling from uh, the Calvin Grove end. Did really well. Ooh, uh -huh. did, he, did he pick that up late? It just, just seemed that he was... He anticipated the ball to come straight to him, and, and, and then at the last minute, so well, I, I need to, I need to probably dive forward. Half a chance, but uh, it was half a chance that would, that could have been taken. Well, the one thing that remains for Nabe is uh, no luck thus far for him. Well, that was John James. Uh, James probably still thinking why he was whipped out of the attack. In the meantime, this one goes uh, over the top of the inner ring. It sliced towards the third man boundary. I'll we'll need to get there quickly. There's a question being asked, but uh, the umpire not interested. So Rapulana gets another two. That's good work in the field. It looks like uh, Kyle Simmons at uh, third man. But that uh, two runs being zoned up the 100 for the AET Tuskers. It's uh, been a uh, hard time for them to get there. It's taken them uh, 84 deliveries and what's more remarkable is that they've only managed to hit eight fours in that uh, 100 runs. So, Well, there's another slice inside out which will only yield one. Uh, but uh, again, uh, to, th th that's another remarkable well, mark difference between the two teams is the, the way that uh, Eddie Moore operated and cut loose when he needed to and the amount of maximums that Wayne Parnell managed to hit up front in his innings. So they just kept the pressure on the Tuskers where the boundaries have been difficult to, to, to find and few and far between and, and that's really kept the Tuskers on the back foot. Mkhechwa advances. Nabe does well to adjust his line. Very impressed with Nabe. Cool and collected customer and just goes through his business. Sort of an unassuming character as well. Just lurks sort of in the background and you know, all the focus perhaps when it comes to the bowling lineup is on the Hendricks and the Parnell and the spin twins of, of Linda and Simmons. And he just comes in under the radar and just does his job and does the business from one end. So in rugby terms, the fly-offs are normally the poster boys, but the forwards do the work. So Nabi's doing the work and the spinners are, <laughs> spinners are picking up the wickets. Another excellent over from Tiwe Kayanabe. Just seven from it. He's uh, three overs thus far, conceding just 20 runs. And I think the one thing we have to also keep in mind is that on two occasions, he's uh, been let down by his field. First by uh, Captain Calvareno, who dropped a real high skyer that he had to charge after. And then more recently in this uh, last over, Juan James on debut. Just not picking the ball up early enough uh, off the bat on Kletchwa. The ball just dropped uh, a little bit uh, short of him fielding at uh, Mudon. We're flying through this innings, busy with the 15th over. George Linda is about to start his last over of his four-over spell. Nord for 19 thus far. He'll operate and uh, go to Rapulana on 55 and Kletchwa is 13. This is what happens when you've got you know, three spinners in your side and a medium pacer like Nabe who just gets to his mark, does his job and just keeps uh, pushing through the over. You get through that middle period pretty, pretty quickly. And uh, in no time, the Tuskers have faced 14 overs and the required run rates up to 18 and over now. So very much behind the eight ball. 
And, uh, do we start speaking, Johan, about uh, whether or not the Tuskers would be able to restrict Western Province to not getting that bonus point, which currently sits at uh, 166, is uh, the magic number. Yeah, even that looks to be uh, a bit far. A couple of wides down the leg side here from George Linder. Probably trying to restrict Mkletchwa uh, from uh, coming down the track, so trying to get it at his, uh, at his pads. Well, this time he gives himself room to try and create the space. This could be a huge mix-up. Oh, boy. Oh, that's not what you wanted. Mkletchwa... Gave himself room to the field, the, the hesitation, the mix-up, too much ground to cover from Tlechua. He's run himself out on his way for 13. Great work by Carl Verena. Yeah, I think uh, Carl Verena really, really enjoyed getting that one. The presence of mind to whip off that uh, right glove before the time. And the cool and calmness to take his time with his aim and fire it at at the stumps direct hit it was uh, from Verena although he only had 22 yards to throw the ball <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll uh, if he tells you that story later on this evening he'll make it sound as though he's, he, he sent that ball from the boundary yeah, absolutely and it was a relay throw <laughs> <laughs> you could certainly see he definitely uh, enjoyed that one his uh, little celebration afterwards and well that's four down then for the AET Tuskers 14.2 overs gone 106 for four and the uh, need for the big hitters continues it is Keith Dudgeon that has uh, made his way to the middle well, excellent love work and awareness to to gather aim and throw all in all, sort of one move and he'll feel better, he, not that he needs reminding, but he, he, he dropped a, a catch that you would have expected to take earlier on and nothing like a run out to get the confidence back and say, okay, all forgotten, back on level terms, got the run out for the team, so all in a better spot. But good performance, all round performance. They did the batting, 208 for six. It needed to be supported by the bowlers. They've done that in abundance. Everyone has contributed, might not necessarily be in the wickets column, but they've all done their job to make it extremely difficult for the Tuskers as they go on another quick single dive comes out. FINA World Championship style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to hurry. Did uh, Keith Dudgeon again, the pressure just on the AT Tuskers unnecessarily just hitting the ball straight to a field and then setting off with, uh, without even looking. Uh, he was uh, in all sorts of trouble. Fortunately for him, though, the uh, throw missing. Again, giving himself some room. It's a lovely shot. He's, he's done a, a couple of times, Rapulana. This time he won't find the fence, but that you will again have to carry his legs. But uh, it is two runs nonetheless. Well, Rapulana will just have to understand that he's, he, he's running with a fast bowler. But it's good to see Rapolana still using his feet against the, against the spinners, uh, trying to manipulate where he hits the ball. Yeah. We've seen him on a few occasions move away from the stumps to open up that offside, go over extra cover. Last ball of the Linda spell. And they'll uh, get another single direct hit, and it's been a classy performance. One or two little mistakes, but for the rest, a pretty solid outfield performance by Western Province. 110 for four. From a Tusker's perspective, 19.6 required to, to win this game. And that, that's not going to happen. It's all about the, the net run rates and the restrictions. So 98 more required. There's a, a summary of what we've seen at Newlands so far. 208 for six, beautifully set up by the century from Edward Moore. Eddie Moore, 101 from 58 balls. Wayne Pornell supported him from the number three position, the unfamiliar number three position, 46 from him, and that put them in charge of proceedings. And Bobileno Budaza took three for 41. He was uh, taken apart in his first two overs, but uh, to his credit, came back and, and took a couple of wickets. And now just the bowlers have taken over and uh, not allowed the Tuskers to challenge for this 209 target. 
One man standing uh, between the Tuskers and uh, Western Province has been Rapulana. Played a lone hand, which is worth 60. Dajian with him as one. But it is Rapulana facing up at the moment. Uses his feet. This one will carry, and that will bring to an end the Rapulana knock. Valiant effort by the man in a very difficult chase. Needed a, a good start. It never came, but Rapulana played a a lone hand, and uh, one can acknowledge his efforts this afternoon at Newlands. He'll walk off, be happy with his own individual contribution, which was worth 60. But that will probably be that from a Tuskers challenge perspective. But if nothing else, Rapolana will take some confidence out of, uh, out of this knock against the quality bowling outfit. Yeah, it's going to take a massive hit for uh, Chanti Rapolana to clear the uh, long off boundary, Kalsam has dished it up for him, he came down the track, took it on, but unfortunately, probably just the, the length of the hit that way, couldn't get enough on it, and uh, Juan James taking the catch in the deep, and uh, giving Carl Simmons his second wicket. Cameron Shackleton comes to the crease, high score of 28 in this format. That was scored against the Dragons. Well, if you are superstitious, I don't want to remind you that Nelson struck 111 <laughs> for five. Good spot there, you are. Good spot. <laughs> but you ever have those superstitious moments or bad up first the left bat, then the right bat, then the left shoe and the right shoe? No, not at all. Ne never any. So you're any normal superstitions. cricketer. <laughs> um, didn't believe in in such things so uh, myself I must say uh, not, the, not the Neil McKenzie type <laughs> <laughs> so Keith Dudgeon has won new man at the crease Cameron uh, Shickleton Carl Simmons almost halfway through his final over again tossed up and this will be Shickleton's opening run Yeah, Rapulana played a, a ge real gem of an innings. If you look at the context of uh, the AT Tuskers innings, getting about 60% of uh, the team's tally up until his uh, dismissal. So this is just the way he went about uh, constructing his innings. He played, he played some really good cricketing shots. Wasn't uh, scared to use his feet. Uh, Bjorn Hendricks also didn't really intimidate him. Came down the track at one point to him to slash him over. Uh, extra cover and that was good to see from uh, from Rapulana I just felt as though he just needed somebody alongside there with him Simmons has been excellent today well the result is in the bag it's uh, now just maybe some batting practice for for the Tuskers lower order opportunity for some of the Western Province bowlers as well just to try some variations and different things the bonus point also think is in the bag 94 to win at 23 and a half but well done Carl Simmons that brings to a close his spell 4 overs 2 for 28 he'll, uh, he'll take that Nabe three overs for 20, Linda four overs for 27, James two overs two for 12. It seems as though Tiwekaya Nabe will be uh, finishing off his, uh, his spell from the Weinberg end. Just a solitary over from uh, Calvin Grove side. Just how good has he been thus far? I think he's probably only conceded one boundary in, uh, in his three overs. Yeah, and he's he, absolutely he's played that supportive role he, he's built pressure from his end that's re resulted in, in wickets on at the other end but that's sometimes the role that you fulfill and it's, you're not always going to get the reward in the wickets column but he'll know that he he played a big part in uh, in the position that the Tuskers find themselves in in thinking about you know, uh, uh, yeah, complimenting Carl Verena's leadership just his field placing I mean there's been so few boundaries in this Tuskers charge and He's just had his field placing spot on. His bowling changes have been spot on. Introduced spin at the right time. 
in hindsight, probably easy to say that now, but he, he had a clear game plan. Also, not operating with the slip today. We saw that throughout the, 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 the context, bar the first over of the match, where Michael Erlang had a, had, had a slip for a, a six-ball period. But they just summed up the conditions. They executed with bat in hand. They're executing with ball in, in hand. They, the fielders have done their bit. Well, this is up in the air. Nabi deserves a wicket, and he gets it. Does deserve that one. Catch is taken. Nabi's on the board in the wicket's column. Oh, that's really, really well deserved from um, Kiwekaya Nabi. He's uh, plugged away for the entire duration for his uh, 20 balls that he has bowled. He's uh, seen two chances uh, go down off his bowling and... Well, third time's the charm for Nabe. Parnell doing really, really well at uh, mid on to uh, run back, or at least at mid off to run back to claim the catch. It's again just wanting to push the game forward. As Shackleton trying to get as many runs as quickly as he can and as calm as you like when you're Parnell making the ground and getting yourself uh, underneath the ball. Oh, good catch by Wayne Parnell, not, uh, not always easy to track back, but uh, good position, the experience showing through once again. Uh, Parnell, we've seen him bowl one over, but he contributed with the bat, and now also a catch. Malcolm Nofal is uh, walking towards uh, the middle, he'll take guard with a touch more than three overs to go in the contest. Just that length is impressive from Nabe. And he's just always constantly knocking on the door. Same corridor, a corridor of uncertainty. And finally, you do force the shot. And maybe something that's out of character. And it finally brought reward. He hasn't been, uh, he hasn't been scared to bowl those variations. The off-cutters, the uh, back-of-the-hand slower balls. Slow ball bounces. He's, he's brought all out. He's brought out all of his uh, all of his tricks today, and as a result, he's uh, more than done a job for his uh, team and for his skipper. Over, bowling over the wicket to the right hand and around the wicket to the lefty. This one is down the leg side, and Dajian missed out. He, didn't get all of it, otherwise that would have been a, a boundary, but uh, half contact, make sure that the, the fine leg fielder can cut that off. Well, I definitely got away with that one now, Ben. I'm sure you saw on his uh, initial walk back to his, uh, to his mark, he had a big smile on his face. So he knows that he, he got away with one there. Got to close out this over though. Slightly shorter, and this time there's no uh, fielding protection there. And he does get the boundary, no fault. Just a slightly short, just missed his mark, Nabi. Well put away by no fault. Uh, like you mentioned, Jan, probably missing his, his mark by a yard or two, and it just sits up, sort of tennis ball-y. For, for no foul, just to rock back onto the back foot and then smear this one through the mid-wicket region. Slightly slower and well disguised. And that brings to a close Nabe spell. Four overs, one for 27. Great day at the office. Tuskers, 122 for six. No foul, five. Dutchian, five. The target, 209. We have three overs left at Newlands, and the rate required, if you are still counting, it's at 29 to the over. So 44 runs to play with to uh, secure the uh, bonus point for all sports betting Western Province. And uh, three overs to do that in, and one feels perhaps that the bonus point is well and truly there already for them. As uh, we see a change in bowling, it's Buren Hendricks back into the tack from the Calvin Grove end. Uh, Hendricks opened the bowling for Western Province this afternoon and 
thus far, two overs for 11. Not to be critical at all, but just looking at the, the scorecard, opportunity for John James to bowl through. He's new to, new to this setup, two overs, two for 12. We have three overs left, so at best, if Carl Brainer uses him from from the, the, the end that Hendricks is not operating from now, at best he'll have a three over spell. And again, not not critical of the leadership. Uh, there's obviously a, a plan at hand, and Spin has, has worked wonderfully for for Western Province this afternoon. Parnell's one over has cost 16. I don't know if we'll, we might see him back for a, a one over burst after this. But in the meantime, Hendricks does go and uh, one bounce out to the fielder, earns Dudgeon and another single. But maybe an opportunity for, for Smith to get those uh, two overs in. Or James, rather. Uh, probably you, you would have felt that um, having picked up the two wickets, he could have you know, bowled out his, his four overs, get his full complement in. But you know, that's uh, one thing I know that the WSB Western Province team prides themselves on. Is that it's not an individual effort. It's uh, it's the team that comes together to to win the game. At the end of the day, it's the team that lifts the trophy at the end of mm. the competition. If they get that far, and yes, we do know that uh, cricket is uh, a series of individual performances that contributes to the bigger team effort. And uh, James, you know, having been in the environment all season in the other formats, would know exactly that. That. You know, if you're only getting two overs, make sure you're contributing for that two overs. And he's done exactly that. Yeah, that would have been probably been part of the blueprint in material of what happened. As that one is smashed through and beats the inner field and will earn Dudgeon a, a boundary. Too uh, full and too wide from Hendricks on this occasion. So just to support what you've said, that, that they would have said, All right, we're going to give you a two overs, but in material, even if you took... Well, you took two hat tricks. <laughs> it's a different but, story but then. Bar that, but <laughs> for the rest, all things being equal, you're probably going to get a, a little two over run and let's see what you do in, a, in the middle of the innings, which he's executed beautifully. So Hendricks, 17 runs for off. He's two and a half. This one is short. It's smashed. It's smashed over the top. Earns him a six. Dajian cuts loose. He moves to 16. That is flat and uh, powerful from Keith Dudgeon. Perhaps this ball just holding in the surface a little bit and sitting up for Dudgeon. He's able to rock back and find the middle of that bat. Fielder in the deep. It looks like Bayumi might have uh, thought he has in it with a chance there for a long time and probably realized when he went over his head that it went for six. Oh, again, opens up the offside. Beautifully executed. Dudgeon goes 4-6-4. Four, four. Here was this from the Tuskers throughout the innings. This is uh, sort of the support that Rapulana needed. Is, uh, just somebody to come in and back themselves and hit through the line. That's effectively what Keith Dudgeon is doing, is, is picking the ball and just hitting through the line. On the up, and you can trust the surface. Always good when you can when you see that. And uh, Dudgeon trusted his his game plan and it through the line. So he's moved on to 20 pretty quickly. If you look at that scorecard, that makes him the, the second highest contributor with Rapulana 60 standing at the top. Now, the SEMA club. Is the bumper coming? How kindly will Hendricks take to the 464? And he goes full again. This time it will find the field of those. So a single to finish the third Hendricks over. Nord for 28. His return leaves the Tuskers on 139 for six. As we approach the final part of this uh, CS 80 20 challenge match, 12 balls remaining. Dajian's probably said, I'm going to use this opportunity. Ooh, bold the penultimate ever. Welcome back, Wayne Parnell. So they're using the same formula as what we saw at the top. It was a 2-1. A Hendricks, two overs, Parnell, one. And it'll be the same now, unless 
Verena decides that he'll he'll take the last over responsibility off the shoulders of Hendricks, which which I can't see why. But nonetheless, Bonnell is back for his second over. First one was expensive. Yeah, the one over at Bonnell bold. He seemed to struggle with his uh, with his rhythm. Wasn't quite hitting his straps. Kind of served up balls for Rapulana. Oh, Dutchie, and he goes the aerial route. This one will take some catching. Oh. Well, never really a really realistic chance, but uh, four nonetheless to Dajian. That little cameo here from uh, Keith Dajian. Dare we say it, four fortunate runs for, uh, for Dajian. Back of a length from Barnell, probably what, uh, exactly what he wanted. And just comes off the top edge. But uh, the thickness of that blade, getting that ball all the way down, and it was a teasing chase for uh, Kyle Simmons uh, on the fine leg boundary. Nearly got there, got half a hand to it. But, uh, still went over the boundary for that four runs. Oh, it's short again, it's whipped away, it's one bounce four. Dajian off to 29, Ponell missing his length again. Just see those uh, fielders in the deep, oh, 10 to 15 meters off the boundary, considering the length. And I'm sure you saw that one landing infield over the uh, fielder's head, but still bouncing short of the rope. And uh, Dudgeon is uh, is no uh, mug with the bat. He does hit them hard and far. So maybe he's saying you saw Parnell went in at three. Maybe I'm putting a case forward for, in, a, in a game where we need to chase. I'm putting my name forward to. To come in earlier and, and, and I, can, I can get us the momentum that we need. So uh, it's Dutch into 30 of only 13 balls. But he certainly has a, he's got a good eye, he's got solid contact, he's looked the part, grabbed the opportunity. But in a losing cause now, it's uh, too little, too late. 148 for 6. Bonnell's gone 4 4 1, so 0 for 25 from his 1.5 overs. Norfolk has also been a, a spectator. Probably enjoying the view. And can he add a couple of boundaries? It's going to be tough. Bonnell goes full and straight. And this is up and over. One bounce. Easily fielded. But the two runs added to the Tuskers tally. Uh, good work from uh, George Linder. As uh, the AET Tuskers brings up the uh, 150 runs. It's taken them 117 uh, balls with 13 fours and one six. And that six uh, coming off the bat of Keith Dudgeon uh, not too long ago. Which a good work from uh, George Linder at uh, Murdon to chase that ball down and prevent the boundary. Again, it's full and tracking back, tracking back. It's a catch. Well executed again by uh, Western Province and that earns them another wicket. Now, bear this time the catcher. So they swap roles. Bonnell was the, the catcher when Nabi got his wicket. Now it's a, Wayne, there's my repayment immediately. I owe you nothing. Straight away, uh, Tiwe Kaya Nabe says, thank you for my wicket, Bonnell. Here's one for you. <laughs> but uh, I mean, that's what you want. or well, that's what you can expect at the back end of the innings. Nofal knowing that he needs to go as well, uh, even though the uh, result is a foregone conclusion. Slow ball, pace off it from uh, Barnell and gets underneath it, does no fault. So good work from Nabe to run back and take that uh, catch. So we welcome Tando Zuma to uh, the crease. Well, they, have, they have changed things around, but not often that you see a keeper come in at nine. <laughs> it was not quite the... Uh, Four left-handers in a row that we have from Western <laughs> Province. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's going to be tough to beat. <laughs> uh, so Parnell's outing uh, a 46 took a catch, little two-over spell. Good day's work. He went like the economy. He's he's, mm. he's proud and he'll, he'll he'll want a bit more from his economy, right? But under the circumstances, one ball ball to complete his two-over spell. It's full and straight. And that will complete his day's work, uh, apart from the handshakes at the end. 
One for 28 from the two overs that Parnell delivered. Brings us to the last, last six balls of this CSA T20 Challenge fixture. Lovely late afternoon in Cape Town. Storm has picked up a win against Edinburgh over the weekend. Western Province are going to do the business this afternoon. I think the one thing that we still need to keep an eye out on is uh, that bonus point mark for WSB Western Province. They've got to restrict the uh, Tuskers to 166 or less. Which as it stands, it's... Uh, Effectively 15 runs of uh, this final six balls to uh, get that bonus point. How keen are they to spoil the full celebration? Let's see what Zuma can do. He's on one, Dudgeon and 30. You just feel Dudgeon, with all respect, he's the man in, he's his eyes in, he's locked into Hendricks. How much of the strike can he get? For now, he'll have five potential deliveries. Excellent start from uh, the experienced campaigner in Buren Hendricks getting it full, uh, sort of onto that Yorker length, close to that guiding line, out of the reach uh, of the batter. Can't get underneath it. All you can do is squirt it away to uh, sort of point cover and uh, pick up the single. But here's the real battle now. Dudgeon took him down in the previous over. He goes too wide this time. And, uh, Dajin, despite the fact that he reached and reached at full length, he couldn't make contact. So a little mini battle won there by Dajin. It means that it's forcing a bit of pressure onto the Hendricks shoulders. And even with the match situation being gone, it's, it's still a little individual battle within a battle. One that Hendricks will, will want to get over, over his uh, SEMA partner from the opposition. A proud club, that. Thus far, it's Dudgeon in the lead. Absolutely. And taking him uh, for a 4 6 4 in uh, the previous over. So, anyway, for Hendricks to win the battle is to knock him over. Walks across his stumps. Intention was there, and he eyed that short boundary. Elevation was not there, so just a single in for Dudgeon. In a polished performance this afternoon. Edward Moore's 101 stands out. I mean, uh, I think that from a bowling perspective, the spin department weaved their magic. This is again just too wide at that guidance line that you spoke about earlier. It's way outside that. So it's not where you want to be from a, a Buren Hendricks perspective. But Lucy in the end. You can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to keep it out of uh, the eye line of, uh, of the batters, trying to get it as wide as possible. So uh, it makes it difficult for them to get a boundary from there. It's just a slight uh, execution that is uh, letting Buren Hendricks down at the moment. This time much better fuller. One bounce out to the field there in the, the inner circle. Final rights then of this uh, T20 encounter. It will be a, a victory for Western Province. The question is by how much can they earn that bonus point. Verena and company, they'll all be aware of it. They'll need a, a strong finish from the man at the top of his mark. He'll turn around and he'll see uh, the prospect of Dajian. The war not over yet. Again, a lot of movement across to his off stump. Wanting to, and they've said they're going to set off and come back. Excellent running by the Tuskers men. They're aware of the situation as well. Giving Dajian as much of the strike as possible. Two more balls remaining. And that 158 for seven, it's maybe a bit close for comfort for Calvarena. This ball will be decisive. You won't need another extra. You could see just that uh, little bit of extra energy into the running. Put pressure on the fielder if you run that first one hard. Give you a chance to get back for the second, which they did for, thanks to a wild pass as well. Again, they'll think two. 
and they'll, they should pick it up quite easily. So 160. Tariq, six to finish the match. 166, that's the target. That's well, 160, well, 167 ensures well, so that plus they don't one. get, they don't yeah, get so the uh, bonus point. So No wide now. <laughs> no wide now, followed by a six or... Yes. You know, no no ball for a boundary, that sort of thing. So just keep your foot behind the line, uh, Buren Hendricks, and it would uh, secure a bonus point victory for World Sports Betting Western Province as he comes now from the Calvin Grove end. Oh, and just uh, three Dutchian had the right idea, and that is all she wrote this afternoon at Newlands. Uh, valiant effort by the Tuskers towards the end, driven by Keith Dajian's 35, or unbeaten uh, 35, little gem that he played. At the top of the order, credit to uh, Rapulana. He saw Jonti Rapulana, who, uh, whose knock of 60 stands out above the rest, along with Dajian's little cameo towards the end, the unbeaten 35 of only 17 deliveries. But to the victors go the spoils, and you have to give credit all round. A, a solid performance by Western Province, what they would have expected, set up the 208 set up beautifully by Edward Moore's century at the top of the order. 101 from 58 balls. Val uh, very valuable 46 by uh, Wayne Parnell who came in at number 3. That uh, was part of the 208 for 6 basket. And then at the end of the day, the, the Tuskers really never got there. Thanks mainly to a very disciplined, polished bowling performance. The spinners specifically hardly gave a, a free delivery. Uh, offered very little on the platter. And uh, the Tuskers were, were always behind the eight ball, especially when they lost uh, Dalport at the top of the order and Kukamur, two of the, the more explosive hitters in their lineup. It was always going to be uh, almost impossible task to, to maintain a run rate of 10 plus to the over for, for a 20 over period, just purely based on what the Western Province bowling lineup dished up. Just in all aspects today, the better team, Western Province, they'll work off the field with their heads held high. Uh, Carl Verena will be a happy man. The Tuskers, they will feel good about the fact that they've managed to get to 160, but there'll be lots of individual things that they can work on. Execution maybe let them down in some areas from a bowling perspective. Also building bowling partnerships at some times. They just failed to support each other. There was a small window period where they had a, a, a good two-over spell put together where they conceded 10, but for the rest, just leaking too much runs. And then from a batting perspective, the lone hand being played by the man at the top of the order, Kajiso Rapulana, and then Keith Dudgeon, maybe putting his hand up as a, a potential number three or four, or pinch hitter duty person that can come in to, to maintain a run rate when you are chasing a, a score of 209. There is a summary of the AET Tuskers scorecard today, the batting effort from their, on their behalf. Rapulana 60 stands out with the 35 from Dudgeon. Not really um, making too much headway in the final analysis, but for Dajian it was uh, worth spending some time out in the middle. At the end, uh, a victory for Western Province, a comfortable victory, and uh, the batter of the match, no surprise, will go to Edward Moore. That's just been announced for his century from 58 balls. There's the bowling summary. Two wickets to Carl Simmons, two wickets to John James, who um, did not bowl his entire spell, and uh, John James has also just been announced as the bowler of the match. So maybe a little discussion between him <laughs> and Carl Verena that will follow to say, you know, I only needed two overs to get that award. So all in uh, good spirit and all part of, part of the, the greater game that is cricket. So it is a win for Western Province this afternoon by 48 runs. Thank you for your company from uh, myself and Tariq Abraham. We'll see you again next time.
ليه ما شفتنا كتب